Did you ever think you would make it? I feel I'm so close, I could take sweet victory. I know this life meant for me. Yeah, yeah. Why would you bet on Goliath when we got Bet David? Value payments, giving values contagious. This world of entrepreneurs, we get no value to haters. How they run, homie, look what I become. I'm the, I'm the one. touched up on it yeah. and that was it episode like 196 it. folks welcome we are live uh with a special guest somebody i spent time with in uh uk i think three years ago four <laughs> years ago katie hopkins it's good to have you on <laughs> thank you very much it's good to be here yeah so let me tell you the story what happened when i was in uk she's known katie your reputation is is just phenomenal friendly you know <laughs> uh, she's a big fan of fat tax yeah. She believes there's no way in the world if I take care of my health and I'm on a flight and I'm a good, you know, 120 pounds and I have to pay for extra luggage, but you're 300 pounds, we should pay mm -hmm. for that additional 180 pounds you're putting on the plane. Like, yes. like common sense type of stuff she believes in. And uh, she's a professional talking smack. Like before we, we even got started, Vinny got a mouthful from her. <laughs> she yelled and, at me pretty uh, loud like yes. I have control over the mic. But, but when, we were, when, when I was in UK, I lost my wallet. And I left the wallet in the cab. You called around until we found the cab, and oh, until we yes, found the did. wallet. That's what she did, which was awesome. And it was a great experience. <laughs> she's, she's a, I was a good soul. I was just yeah. looking there. That's my, so that's sort of my LGBT haircut <laughs> yeah. that and, freaked everybody out. So Americans were always like, well, hold on. She's got short hair. She must be a lesbian. And, and that's kind of my prison break outfit uh, right there. Yeah. Yeah. Hanging out too that. much with that mobsters. Mobster, and, yeah. Yeah. That was yeah, your so, monster days. That was yeah. your, your Roger Stone. Okay. <laughs> to be clear, you are not LGBT. LGBT. No, I'm not. I mean, I mean, I could be because as you get older, you just have to sort of widen your opportunities. So you know, take maybe, what you can get. I'm open can get. to the idea. But, I'm open to that. Yeah, well. but no, I was never a lesbian in this. But I just always had to make it clear. I'd had some head, some surgery on my brain, uh, and um, so I had short hair. But it was terrifying for conservative audiences everywhere. Yeah, not a lesbian. But, no, but they but were like, play she's one, on one TV. of those. She's one of those. She's oh. one of those. So, so let me tell you, we got a surprise, guys. We got a lot of topics to go through. Mm -hmm. Obviously. It, 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 the timing couldn't have been better for you to be here and Liz Truss resigns after 44 days. We'll get into that. Uh, we, we got, uh, we'll talk about what's happening with, uh, you know, power bills, you know, what's going on in the UK with uh, prices, uh, the economy there. And then at the same time, we have a, a two, <laughs> two special guests here today. Let me tell you who's <laughs> going to be on zooming in. One of them is going to be, are you familiar with Phoebe Plummer and Anna Holland? Do you know who they are? <laughs> no. So they are the ones that are part part of the the just oil activists. Oh, oh, they went and they threw soup all over Van Gogh's sunflower painting. They can join us today. They're going to explain why they glued their hands against the wall, and and they have to explain. And we want to find out why they're on. Okay, so it's going to be a she perfect shock, setup for you. Right now. I'm watching <laughs> her face. Yes. Yes. Go. Explain. By the way, go. Katie, they agreed to be on. That's the part. So that's that's the fun part. Second thing, can we just address? Know I was here? Yeah, no, they don't know you're here. Oh my good no, lord! So and what is that? that? Look on your way, face. Right hopefully there. they stay. Hopefully they stay. They agreed to be on today. So hopefully they stay. We, we're we're going to be very. We're hoping they stay. And then at the same time, we have Matthew Bunn on, <laughs> which will join us at around 1015. He is a professor of the practice of energy, national security, foreign policy. This is what he did. He's a current professor at Harvard. And uh, let me see this here. Uh, is an American nuclear and energy policy analyst, currently a professor at practice at Harvard Kennedy School, Harvard University. He's a co-principal investigator of the Belfer Center Project on Management of Atom his father, George Bunn, was a leading figure in the field of arms control who helped draft and negotiate the nuclear non-proliferation uh, treaty in, of 1968, limiting the spread of nuclear weapons worldwide. And here's what he recently said. He said, it's a very serious situation. President Biden is right. This is the worst danger of nuclear weapons being used since Cuban Missile Crisis. And uh, we'll see what he has to say about it. Could we potentially go into a nuclear war? I don't know. I mean, we'll ask him some questions. Well, okay, so. but he sounds like the sort of guy I wouldn't want to sit next to at a wedding. Well, <laughs> so but, but, dull as hell. And that's why he's on Zoom, though. So we're making yeah, it, we're accommodating for everybody. Someone's he can. got the off button handy. Yeah. So, you know, first of all, just it's good to have you on. It's good to have you here. We got a lot of topics to go through. I want to hear your thoughts on your favorite president, Biden, to see how he's doing so you can kind of <laughs> shed some light on him. And then maybe we'll talk a little bit, Meghan Merkel, and we'll talk about 
Again, people you like is what the focus is today, right? <laughs> yeah, you've really lined up something special. I for really me, have. You? I just wanted to get the best out of you today. I realize. For sake, it's like going on a long car journey with vegans. <laughs> I just, this is not something I do. Yeah. Okay, so Katie, for people that don't know you, can you tell them a little bit about your background? For people that don't know. Yes, um, and which is most people, I'm sure. Um, I am a former British Army intelligence officer and I went through the Royal Military Academy Sandhurst and signed up to fight for my country for 35 years. Uh, I had to be medically discharged later with epilepsy, hence the lesbian haircut in our (laughs) earlier reference point because I was then cured of my seizures. And so now I bring my fight to the road. I threw myself on the road about two months ago to fight with you for your midterms and have been rallying the red in swing states for the last two months, moving every other day. I'm known for being outspoken. I don't ask to be liked, but more importantly, I don't ask for people to agree with me. This is what I think. I'm not asking you to think the same. Um, And I've been called many names because of my work, of course. One of them sounds like witch, but begins with B. So I'm known as the biggest bee witch in Britain. Uh, And I'm the most banned woman on the planet as well. I am banned from normal things like Twitter or PayPal or my own bank account. I'm also banned from um, all British and US media, apart from you guys who are independents. I'm banned from the entire country of South Africa for highlighting the slaughter of white farmers. But the ANC banned me and I've just been banned and deported from Australia for speaking out against the tyranny of lockdown, locking down two, an, an island of people for two years. And I'm also banned from a small place in Great Britain called Wales. But that's fine because nobody wants to go to Wales because everybody there is ginger or short. <laughs> and that's who I am. Great intro. By the way, somebody needs to write that and hand it over and say, let me introduce you to my next speaker that's coming up. Here's who Well, all I can say is I'm far more interesting than that dullard nuclear boffin that you have coming along. Well, we'll see. We'll see how interesting no, he's going to be. I know we'll see what he's going to say. You know, you, you know maybe, maybe he's pessimistic, optimistic. Who knows? Who knows oh, maybe you were short say. of guests today. I don't know. Well, then let's, let's, talk about you. let's talk about with you on that topic before it comes up. What do you think is going to happen with Russia and Ukraine, in your opinion? Like, so... It'll be so. I'm a 180 to this guy. Um, I think uh, I'm a big believer in Putin. I love Russia. I've been there on many occasions. Uh, Putin's a strong and fantastic leader on the international stage. People seem to think Ukrainians are angels. Uh, They are off their minds. They are mostly Nazis, and the Russians are doing a good job. Zelensky is a puppet. Uh, He was an actor before. You may have clips of him in rubber, Mm -hmm. in high heels. Maybe you'd like to play them to the nuclear boffin. And uh, he's being used as a puppet and installed to create a situation where Biden gets to animate the sort of the industrial complex. And uh, personally, I think it's the biggest farce we ever did see. Imagining Americans are at all interested in Ukraine is bonkers. Most Americans couldn't find Ukraine on a map, respectfully, and nor should they have to. So that's my point of view. And of course, it's the opposite to CNN, most lefties, and indeed people who live in my road in England, who adopted Ukrainian refugees because they're such good people. Now, now if that's the case, why why uh, are we being sold by the media totally. of him being a modern day Churchill, him being a modern day you know, incredible leader who yeah. shows up wearing regular khaki, you know, military clothes. And people have bought into this guy oh, being so a hero. True. They're going out to want to take pictures, introduce oh. themselves. You're my hero. You're this, you're that. Why, is, why does the average person fully disagree with you yes. on your position? Because um, mostly people aren't that intelligent. 80% of people have to be introduced to themselves in the mirror and have to be taught how to tie a shoelace. Um, also, I think... Um, <laughs> have to be taught how to use Velcro, you know, uh, that sort of thing. But also, uh, look, he's an actor. He's perfect for the job. Put him in a green T-shirt. Always have him sitting down because he's only five foot four. And you know that I don't agree with short people. So you don't get that sort of perspective. You go to have a photo with him and you're like, you realise you have to kneel down. This is not the good guy. This is not the saviour of mankind that he's being dressed up to be. You don't think he is? Uh, It's not that I don't think he is. It's implausible. This is the savior of anything. So so when I was in Iran and, and the Shah that eventually was in exile, they sold him the same way to say this is not a good leader. He's not doing good for Iran. He's a puppet to the West, right? The phrase puppet to the West has been used many times. 
Are you saying he? Are you saying Zelensky is it? Because Shah ended up not being a puppet to the West. Yeah. Shah ended up being a person that actually did a lot more good for that country. Ever since that happened, we saw what's going on with Iran. So some people may say, well, you're saying yes. that because your position is different. But, yes. you know, he's standing up. Look, their military is not there. You know, Russia's losing so many people that are leaving their country. Putin just all of a sudden asked 300,000 people that are civilians to want to serve who don't want to serve. It's the complete opposite in Russia. And then some say, well, you know, Putin currently has an 83 percent approval rating from its people. But who was really polling? So, again, going back and forth. And that's so tiring, isn't it? It's so tiring to try and find the truth of anything. What we can say is we just get a load of CNN reporters stood on the skyline in Ukraine reporting on absolutely nothing other than the fact they're stood on the skyline. We have uh, Putin's people who still have him with a massive popularity rating. And this idea that he's much weakened, I think, is a myth and a fabrication. Either he's about to launch nuclear Armageddon or he's much weakened. Make your mind up. Which one is it? And this has always been a power play for NATO. Putin always had a red line, which he would not have NATO NATO on his doorstep. And that's what was pushed via Zelensky, is to push NATO onto his doorstep. Mm. He was always very clear this was a red line, and he's acting exactly in accordance with the way that he said he would if NATO pushed the way to to his doorstep. Do do you think it's likely that we go into nuclear war with this or no? No, I think it's 100% false. I think it's very much like the COVID narrative. People just are hungry for fear, and they're hungry to be told what to do. People enjoy a state of fear because people are subservient. People aren't bold like they used to be. People want to be told what to do by an even bigger government. You know, and and my view is the opposite to that. We have to stand up, rise up, uh, be strong, and, and, and not back down to any of this stuff. Not back down to any of this stuff. So... Okay, so your position is no, we're not going to go into a nuclear war. Nope. It's going to be all right. It's not going to be crazy. How do you think this thing ends? Do you think it ends with uh, uh, a Biden setting up a peace treaty meeting for them to sit down and figure out what to do with different parts of the land? Do you think it ends with Putin getting what he wants? Do you think it doesn't end for a long time? What do you think happens to this? It definitely doesn't have anything to do with Biden and him negotiating anything. He Most popular president of all time. He couldn't negotiate his own way out of a bathroom cubicle, and we know that, without Jill on hand to drag him out of there. It probably ends if if uh, Reds win the midterms, we stop fueling a war that America has no place in, and Putin takes over the bits of Ukraine that he wants to take back, uh, and Ukraine backs down. But the only way that happens is if America stops funding this ridiculous war that Putin doesn't want to be in. So midterms, yes. w- 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 midterms, why your interest in UK? Why such interest in the midterms of US? Because you are our hope as well. You are the light shining on the top of the hill. You are our hope in the UK. We're already lost. We're already gone. Demographically alone, if you just disregard me, if you loathe me, hate everything I am, that's fine. But by 2030, Muslim births outnumber births to all other in my country. We're gone. Every city. Wait, wait, what did you just? Are you serious? Did you hear what she just said? The fact. You can have a Google. Pull this up. Births, Muslim births in the UK. Out? Outnumber any and all other religion by 2030. Wow. Oh, by 20. Oh, my God. Wow. Double. Wow. So they're not using condoms, is basically what you're saying. Having eight kids each. What? UK Muslim numbers to double by 23. Every every British city, uh, the mayor in every British city, I mean the big cities, is Muslim. Why is that, though? Why is that? And how, how sm- that you see the same model here, Minneapolis versus Minnesota. Minneapolis, highly prevalent po- Muslim population, densely organized into collective housing situations. Yeah. And when they vote, you'll only ever get Muslim leadership there. We will never have a non-Muslim mayor of London again. It's statistically impossible. Wow. You will never have a non-Muslim mayor ever again. Yeah, of London. London will always go to a Muslim mayor because the population of London is now densely packed Muslim population. Was that strategic or did that accidentally happen? No, no, no. There's nothing accidental. This is strategic power player taking over of a nation. So back to topic, hence the US is our hope as well, in the sense that this is where freedom will live. And this is why I care about the midterms and that's why I'm on the road. And your messaging on the road is what? What what are you you hitting on, on the road? The ours is the side, and by ours, I mean the side that simply wants the best for each other, right? So ours is the side that wants everyone to be all right. And ours is the side that's been through a lot. Lockdown, 
wiped out businesses, wiped out families, split people up, got people uninvited from weddings and the, their synagogue. And it destroyed people's lives and people felt utterly lost. And then you had the installation of Biden, which I was there for in D.C., and people have been wondering what on earth is happening to America. People sit in comfortable studios like this, but I've just come up from downtown Atlanta and white people are basically being hunted and targeted in the streets. It happened in front of me. I've seen white people when they start to scurry in downtown places. They scurry like rats. Happens in Minneapolis, happens in downtown Atlanta. And that's the truth of these cities in America. And we can't let that happen here. It's already happened in my country. We can't have it happen here. So, so for people in America uh, who um, maybe this isn't in their top 10 concerns when yes. they wake up in the morning. Of course right? it's not. And they're just sitting there saying, well, that's your problem. That's happening in the UK. Yes. It'll never happen to us. So two questions I, I would want you to address. One, who cares about this issue? Why should we be afraid if they do do this? Because some people are not concerned about no. that. And then the second thing is, what are the likelihood of, likelihood of that happening in the States? Um, number one, no, I totally understand. Most people have to try and get up. They've got to try and get their kids out the door. They've got to find someone to help them find the car keys. They've got to try and get to work. They can't afford this, that or the other. And then probably the dog ran off down the road and started humping the neighbor's leg. Like that's the reality of our everyday. It's a real issue. It's a real issue. Yeah. I, I'm, I am a regular mother. I, I do have. It's surprising, <laughs> I know. But I like I have a husband. I, I have three teenage children. Like I have I have two dogs. I get the thing that's more important. Mm -hmm. But uh, the reason it matters is because people need hope and they need to believe in something. And people out there are battered right now. People come up to me in tears when I do talks and we have time together and they're in a room with people who just want them to be all right. People are in tears because they are exhausted by being surrounded by endless madness here in America. And I find that really hard. People want to believe in democracy. <clears throat> they want to believe in freedoms. They want to believe in things like medicine. And for the last couple of years, many people feel those things have fallen apart. Um, but my message isn't a negative one. It is a really optimistic one. I love our side. I love uh, Americans because you have freedom hardwired into your souls and you have a Second Amendment that I that I applaud. And, uh, I, you know, it's part of that message is to, that we keep going. Our fight will always be uphill. It's, it's funny. I'm going to go to our sponsors. But I remember when you were on CNN uh, and you said Trump's going to win it. And you said, well, folks like yourself who at the Clinton News Network and the lady was shell shocked when you said that. Too. Yeah, she was, she was, she We're not the Clinton News Network. Yeah, right. We let him. We're no, not biased. You're not, not talking biased. about the fact that in Florida, Trump's been coming up, et cetera, et cetera. So you really call out a lot of stuff. And I want to go into some of the issues that we have with UK as well as the guests. But let's first talk about uh, our sponsor today, Aura. So we, we decided to have Aura as uh, one of our uh, main sponsors. And uh, we totally support what they're doing. A couple different reasons why is one. Uh, the fastest growing crime in America today is identity theft. There's a new victim every 14 seconds. Last year, over $50 billion was lost because of identity theft. For the first time in the history uh, in U.S., theft from cybercrime in the U.S. has exceeded robbery, home robbery. And this hasn't happened ever. This is the first time that this is taking place. I'm in the financial industry, the insurance industry. Every meeting I have with insurance companies, all they want to talk about is cybersecurity. Every year for the last six years, our cybersecurity insurance that we spent has increased every year to protect ourselves from clients. So this happens in business. This happens in personal. And so what Aura does, it's, it's an identity theft, fraud monitoring, a VPN password management, and antivirus software all combined into one easy-to-use app. You may have one of those tools, but not have or not having all of them is the is like locking the front door but leaving the back door wide open. There's a, there's a test you can take on there to check on your password. One of our guys, Aaron, I tell the story every time. One of our guys, Aaron, went on there. 44, 43 of his passwords was found in the dark web just by this easy test that he can do that can find out for yourself. So highly recommend you guys take advantage of this. Uh, protect you and yourself and your family from uh, America's fastest growing crime. Try Aura free for two weeks and see if any of your or your family's personal information has been compromised. You can start your 14-day free trial at Aura.com forward slash PBD. Once again, Aura, A-U-R-A dot com forward slash PBD, Aura.com forward slash PBD. Let's put the links below in the chat as well as in the description for people to go find. So, okay, so you're in the U.S. wanting to help with midterms because you're, 
you think the last hope for everybody around the world is America. Yes. And you said you fully support Second Amendment. Yes. You fully support all that stuff. How different is freedom of speech in America, Second Amendment in America, than it is in UK? So uh-huh. we kind of get, you can get some optics. Yeah, it's wild. So I was in the back for Uber yesterday. And this lovely lady was driving and I said something about um, difference in driving in the UK, US. I said, it's different because you guys could have a weapon in your car and people kind of have some respect for that. Where I live, we're not allowed weapons. We don't have a Second Amendment. We're not allowed to be armed. Our police officers are not armed on the streets of the UK. They don't carry weapons. We have armed response units. Tyler, did you know that? Police officers in UK are not armed? Yes. They have whistles and batons, right? They have a whistle. A whistle. That stops all crime. They got, a, makes they got a, a baton that yeah. They, yeah. they beat some ass with. Yeah. They've got literally, that. that is literally the That's truth of the matter. On. What's the logic behind that, though? This weird, <laughs> and so I'm British, but I'm more American with the 2 yeah. thing, right? This weird British idea that if you don't have guns, it makes you safer. And so when, let's just say, a jihadi comes up and goes on a stabbing spree, as they did on Westminster Bridge, he just stabbed the police officer. Yeah. And there's, they have just a whistle to blow. I've had a lot of whistles. I've never seen a whistle <laughs> stop a no. criminal. It's just, no, but yeah. they, they only just don't have a whistle. They've got batons. They've got, they've got yeah, other the, items. They just don't have guns. What does that do with a knife, though, or a car? Or, Listen, or I'm, a not, car here, I'm not here to defend uh, yeah. British police or their mentality. I'm letting you know they just have more than a whistle. Well, yeah, but if a car is coming at you, at least a, a cop would be able to shoot through the windshield. Because, I mean, like she just mentioned... Knives are, are prevalent, and a car bro does a lot hey, of you damage. You can't throw a baton through a windshield? No, actually, well, unless your aim is that. amazing we and it loops work. around, but no, you, you need a gun, bro. You need, you need a gun. Yeah, so Sorry. Brits do not understand they Second get... Amendment. They do not understand guns. Pierce Morgan is totally anti-Second Amendment. How, how did, he's and a... he sounds like a, like he can, he, he, he's, he sounds like a smart guy. How is he? Anti Second Amendment, not believing in you know even cops or people having guns. It's the wildest thing. Uh, that's not the only thing Piers Morgan has been disgusting about. He was disgusting about lockdown. He was pushing the vaccine passport. He believed people shouldn't even be allowed to go anywhere near any form of travel if they didn't have a vaccine passport. He was the pusher of the whole lockdown stuff that went on. So don't even bring up Piers Morgan. So that was part one of your question was about weapons. Part two was something else. Yeah, like freedom of speech. So you're, oh. you're saying, hey, you guys, have, you still have freedom of speech. Some people will say it's kind of gradually going away. Uh, and, you know, some things are being, you know, uh, but still, how different is that in yeah. UK? So for us, we have such a large web of um, hate speech laws. So it, effectively, truth becomes hate speech. And therefore, if you speak the truth, it's an arrestable offence. I've been arrested for a column in a newspaper. For example, we have people arrested for comments on chat groups. Or if you make a comment on a Facebook page that is not deemed as appropriate, that is hate speech, police officers turn up at your door and arrest people. And arguably, you've got hints of that here when you have the FBI turning up at James O'Keefe's door for no apparent reason other than he's on the wrong team. Um, so for, certainly for us, when I left the UK a couple months ago, the last thing I did was a big stand up night uh, in a theatre with a guy that is just doing similar to what I do. Uh, that guy is now in prison in the UK. He was sentenced that week. When he, we got off stage, he was sentenced to five and a half years in jail for speech, for videos on YouTube that were said to be stalking and harassment of people. What, Basically what doing what we Just doing this. He was just bringing up different people, Meghan Markle, somebody. It was a lot of the BBC he was going for, a lot of their presenters. But for doing this... He was, he was, uh, it was the first case of its kind. And when you get new law, you know you're always in trouble. Mm. New law that said that that was stalking, online stalking, and he's now inside five and a half years. And, K- and Katie, you feel it happening slowly but yeah. surely here. 100% uh, videos are getting taken down. People, and I, I feel it slowly happening. And I have two questions. Well, number one, what is their goal? When I say their goal, like, the crime, defunding the police, you know, the border, inflation, recession, sending money. What is there? Because in this two years, it's gone completely down here, downhill. When, when people talk about Trump, I go, love him or hate him, this would not be going on. I don't care who the hell you are, who you vote for. If you can't at least admit it's horrible right now and it's not getting any better, then, then 
That's exactly. And that's why my frustration with journalists that just want to talk about Herschel Walker's past history of whateverness. Yeah. I want to say, come here, get my hand. I'm going to walk you through downtown where I was just in Atlanta. Yeah. Come see if people there really care about Herschel Walker's background. Or do you think they, they care about the fact that I just watched a lady have a cigarette snatched out of her face and have her bag take? I mean, I got involved in that and the, that was returned. But mm-hmm. the point is... You know, that is the reality of on the road and things are collapsing so fast here and it is terrifying to watch. Mm -hmm. Uh, But what I see is a result of that, having just spent three weeks on the road in California, is red has never been as red. Mm -hmm. Like the red is dug in, it's not going anywhere and it's there to fight. And that's why I think the midterms are going to be a massive result for for the reds. And and, and, and last question, too, Kate. And it it seems to me, and I'm I'm, I'm with you and I I feel that, that, that passion, but it's like, to me, it's almost like, the the red the, the the Republicans they bark a lot you know what I mean from 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 Lindsey Graham to Jim Jeffries to um, who Jim Jordan to, to Rand Paul oh yelling at Fauci getting them red handed like you're in trouble and nothing happens I it, and then when, and I, I don't I hate sound like a conspiracy theorist but when I say they're on the same team one side's in charge for a while the other side just points nothing happens Fauci's rich he's he got richer during the pandemic. Nothing is going to happen. None of them are going to get held accountable. So it's almost like I feel there is a portion of the country that's kind of like, like, vote for what? For what? It's not going to change. And if it does flip and it does go red, and then hopefully DeSantis, somebody, it'll change for a while, but then they're going to come back at some point, aren't they? Yeah, I see what you're saying, and I, I totally get that sort of sense of despondency, but then I see how people were so done with politicians and waiting they were like right that's it I'm getting involved in the school board Mm -hmm. and then we had all the mothers turning up at the school boards and then you ended up with a young kid in Virginia because it was only by saying we will let parents have power in schools did he get elected and he's now doing great things yeah so the the bottom can kind of work its way up but I I hear you on that yep quick thought for you um we're living in an attention economy. Eyeballs are everything these days. And kudos to you because you're a brilliant talker. You know what you're saying. You're a shock jock, like you're a Howard Stern-esque type person. And some of the things you say are hyperbolic. Some of the things you say are true. Not everything is everything for you. Um, I'm wondering for you, what percentage are you saying just to, as a comedian to be hyperbolic and just to kind of throw stuff out there? And what stuff is actually factual and true? So, for instance... I have a phone in my hand. This is a phone. And you can Google things with a phone. So um, Volodymyr Zelensky, a couple quick points. He's the same height as your boy Putin. They're both 5'7". He's not 5'4". Putin isn't exactly a giant, okay? That's one. Number two, I don't give two shits about the Muslims in the UK. But a quick Google search will show you that Muslims' population will double by 2030, apparently, and go from 6.3% to 17% by 2050. This is Google, Katie. I don't care. Thirdly, I just Googled pictures of UK police officers with guns. Apparently, they got a lot of fucking guns. So my question to you is, what percentage of what you're saying is hyperbolic, getting eyeballs, respect, we live in that kind of world now, versus actually factual and true? Okay, Uh, let's go from the start there. You showing me what a phone is and saying this is a phone, that isn't really the way to start an argument because that's to assert that I'm stupid and don't know what a phone is. Well, you're assuming we're stupid because we can't Google things that you say as a fact checker. Would you like me to answer what you just said? Sure, go ahead. You're going to talk over me. We could do either one. I could go either way. But go ahead. This is all you. Is it? Yeah, go ahead. So starting off on that kind of tone, I don't think is necessary. You then go to your phone and say, I can Google this like you've got the biggest penis on the planet. Where you might you have the biggest oh, penis on the, on the planet, planet Katie. Got, I don't know. Darling, I've got bigger balls than Caitlyn Jenner. I, I <laughs> so, actually um, believe you, Katie. I actually believe you. But go ahead. Quite, you're so bad at listening. And then when you stop talking, you say, go ahead for just a moment in time. You can Google anything. Why don't you Google my name and see what it says on Wikipedia? Because you'll find out that I'm both a monster, uh, that I'm bankrupted, that I have no uh, background or backbone. You'll find out that I've bedded everybody in the UK. Many of those things won't actually be true. So just because you Googled something, Mm -hmm. that doesn't really make you Elon Musk, darling, does it? It just means maybe you can use one or two of your hands, probably one side of your hand more than the other. It's had more (laughs) practice. 
you then talk about Zelensky's height as if that's a fact because you read it. And that's a misinterpretation of itself, isn't it? Because just because you read it on Google doesn't make it true, my flower pot, does it? And then you also talk about the fact this old statistic, Muslim 6%, walk with me, my flower, walk with me through London, through Leicester, through Birmingham, through Bradford, and walk with me through Minneapolis, because you can call it 6% if you make that disparate in a population. But in the cities where they cluster together, you will find they have the majority. It's why they have the power. It's why we have a Muslim mayor. It's why we have a Muslim housing association. It's why we have a Muslim police association. And it's why we have Sharia law in most of our cities. And finally, you managed to find a picture of a police officer with a weapon. Well done, darling. Have a gold star and do some more Googling. Maybe you could watch some Cartoon Network while we adults talk. Of course, there are armed response officers. I said that as part of my answer. But most police officers on the streets of the UK are not armed. Is that okay for you? Yes, my little flower pot. So <laughs> here's the deal. I Again, I let wait, off with wait, the... F- wait a minute. Hold on. You've managed, wait, wait, this is totally breaking. Wait, you need to stop the business, <laughs> stop value because seriously, what he's done, he's Googled police officers and they're holding weapons, which, which must make him right and me wrong. I literally came here to talk out my ass, but look what he's done, everybody. I think that deserves it. Uh, Come on, are they, join uh, in. Number one, thank okay. you, Tyler, for Googling well, it on your end. Well done. Katie, yeah, so well done. I, I appreciate, again, I'd let off with a compliment that you're a good talker and you get eyeballs. Congratulations. You're good at that. Part of the problem why you probably piss people off is you have major masculine energy. So respect to you. So I know you're saying you're married. I don't know about that. I know you're saying that you've got you're well, you a family could woman. It. You could Google but you can, it. <laughs> but, but, but <laughs> Katie, <laughs> how can we trust Google, Katie? Why don't you I'm ask using Tyler, your words against you, beautiful. Ask, ask Listen, Tyler to pull your little winky. I will. And you can Google my husband. I, you probably have a bigger dick than me, Katie. That, I don't know. And I'm packing. Become, that will become so it's okay. a fact. That will become a fact if you I guess so. It. Yeah, but I don't know if we can trust Google, darling. I don't know. So you're saying, I know, what was your, what was the point? The point is, I'm giving you compliment you're hyperbolic you get eyeballs respect i'm also saying not everything you spew out there is accurate what was the compliment that you get eyeballs and that you're a good talker no i think if you're around for 15 or so years in the media it would be if you were spewing nonsense you'd be caught out no you'd probably be cancelled everywhere and then where were you cancelled again I am literally cancelled from countries, my Okay, darling. well, is that a good thing? Are you proud of that? I am, actually, yes, okay. I am. Okay, well, then of. kudos to you, Katie. I'm proud You're of doing being what deported. you want to do in life. I'm proud of being deported from Australia for going over there and calling out the tyranny of lockdowns. Respect. I'm proud of standing up for those people who had that done to them. What and the, you... the Australians needed you? Like, they needed Katie? No, and that's something I always make very... Are you even Australian? So which are you question, even American? Which question do you want me to answer? Both the first, of those. the second, there was yeah. three actually. Are you quite? So I am not uh, American. I okay. am not Australian. Okay. And I come over here because I'm a respectful foreigner and an outsider that cares about your country. So you're a globalist. No, I'm not a globalist. Oh, I don't know. I don't, I don't, to say. Well, I'm just like if you go in and I, like I come to the United States and and basically get involved in politics, or you go to I'm Australia, sure get involved in politics. I, a, I'm not sure what you're doing. B, I'm not sure I'm what not you're sure doing. What I'm asking you genuine questions. And C, I can't help but feel you're kind of angry, but I don't know why. Maybe I woke up on the wrong side of the bed today. Maybe I was. I had a, a British girlfriend that uh, you remind me of. I don't know. However, that's actually a true story. Yeah. I, and by the way, can we get him some Snickers yeah. bars? I'm okay. I know that's, I know so I get that's a true story. This morning. Yeah. I know that's a true story. Katie, I didn't feel that. Katie, here's what I genuinely believe. Her. Here's what I genuinely believe. I'm not your I don't girlfriend. believe. You believe me, I date a lot hotter chicks than you. But here's what I definitely believe. You actually are a, a person that knows what they're doing. You're not an idiot. You've been confronted before. You confront a lot of people. You've been you anti-liberalist, anti-multicultural, anti-fat, anti-immigrant. Anti tattoos. Sorry uh, to inform you, Vinny. She doesn't like you. You have tattoos. Okay. So listen, okay. Katie, you're cry me a river. She has a tattoo on her. <laughs> okay, there it is. Katie. She has a tattoo on her bum. Katie, I've taken a lot of heat this. before. Love I can he take it. it. Are you saying it. that you can't take heat, Katie? You take heat all the time. You give heat. I just, there's just a lot of noise coming off you. I stopped listening. Katie, I hear a lot of ago. noise. You just sound a little more proper than me, Katie. <laughs> uh-uh. But no, we're all just talking I noise think, here. I think you're, I, making I wanna, a bit of a, you're making a bit of a thing of yourself, sweetie. Just I'm, I, I'm enjoying you, Katie. Carry on, Patrick, darling. Okay, let me go to the story here with Liz Trust. That's great. That was good. It, it was very entertaining. Audience is definitely loving it. So, Adam, good for you. I okay. got to see her. All right, so I'm Liz, Liz. Liz Truss resigns and will become shortest-serving PM in British history. 
Uh, she's resigned prime minister just after 44 days from uh, over taking over Boris Johnson. She will be the shortest serving PM in British history. In the statement outside uh, Downing Street, Truss admitted she could not deliver her mandate. She said, I came into office at a time of great economic and international instability. Families and businesses were worried about how to pay their bills. She said she was elected with a mandate to change this, adding, we delivered on energy bills. I recognize, though, given the situation, I cannot deliver the mandate on which I was elected by the conservative party. So, one, was she somebody that most of the conservatives were happy about? Uh, Did they want to replace Boris with her? And two, her reasoning for resigning. Is this a good thing for UK or a bad thing? I mean, she had to go. So we were waiting for, I guess, a day. But we kind of saying it was down to the hour. So you knew, you go. knew this was coming. We knew she okay. was going. So that once she came in with her measures, uh, the markets reacted really badly to those measures. So the pound just plummeted. We were at parity with the dollar for the first time in modern history. Uh, yeah, borrowing, 103. Very weird. It was crazy. Wow. Borrowing rates went through the roof. So mortgages went through the roof in terms of people who were looking to fix a mortgage. Um, and so the markets basically decided she was gone. So she was already kind of a dead woman walking. Um, she was brought in. People preferred Boris Johnson. Old money preferred Boris Johnson. So she, we always knew she wouldn't be around for long. And it was humiliating. I don't enjoy, yeah, iceberg lettuce in blonde wig at last Liz Trust. I don't know if I really enjoy it. I know you boys might enjoy that. Well, I don't know if I enjoy seeing Did her. Did you like her? Did you actually like her? No. Okay. She's robotic and weird. I got you. What I, what I really would love is if, if Britain had um, democracy that people could believe in. But honestly, ordinary Brits, a bit like what we were talking about earlier, their daily concern at the minute is they can't afford to heat their houses. They can't afford to buy stuff yeah. in the store. We now have something called heat banks in the UK, where old people are supposed to go and heat themselves in the day in public buildings because they can't afford to heat their own homes. I mean, it's a fairly dire situation. I suspect what we'll see, well, we're either going to see Rishi Sunak or we're going to see Boris Johnson come back into play. And the latest rule that they've made up is that 100 MPs, uh, whoever's going to run has to have the support of 100 MPs. So it's going to be a very, uh, very fast competition to see who's going to replace Liz Truss. I mean, this is not normal, though, right? 44 yeah. days? 44 the, the, days. The longest was, what, 142 or 124? Some number like that, she right? I mean, that it, yeah. was in 1896, so the race, 130 years ago. The race she was in to be prime minister was longer than the time she spent as prime minister. That's, that's uh, again, so purely the, the money people didn't support it because the economy was being felt under policies. And that's like, but we got to move on. Oh, she was gone. Okay. She was gone. Got it. So, and and how likely is it that a Boris is going to come back? Because people are just kind of saying, let's just get him back in here. He was safe. He was good. He was, is that kind of what so is there's, most there's likely going to happen? There's a weird play going on. There's a weird dynamic. Rishi Sunak is what I think the party would want. I think it's what the Marcus, markets would want. I think it's what globalists would want. You know, they love him because he's a Montecito boy over in California with a green card and the richest wife actually in England. You might want to Google that. <laughs> um, but I um, think the people in the UK loved Boris. So if we then went to a general election, who could win still for the Conservative yeah. Party, not Rishi, but Boris could. But did you Listen. like him? Did you like Boris? I liked him right up until the point he locked down my country. Yep. Got it. Do we have any examples and, and by like the this? way, do, do you remember, like, if I recall, I remember, you know, you can fact check me on this. I don't know why I remember him saying uh, herd immunity is the way to go, the only way to solve this. And that's kind of what he was pitching exactly. at. For, exactly. He, was, the, uh, he said that, he right? Was yeah. Right until the point that whoever got to him, money. whatever they... It, money, it, somebody, it, Pfizer, totally. somebody... It's either money or it's either... 100%. I, I agree 100%. But it's either money or it's either they had something on him. Because I yes. remember yeah. everybody you looked at from the past, and you looked at, like, even the interview with Fauci years ago where he says... If somebody has this, should they get a vaccine? No, that's the ultimate, you know. Vaccine. Uh, that's the best vaccine. Yeah. So, so well, her- real quick, how much of that do you think had to do with Boris getting COVID? Boris got COVID bad. He was hospitalized. He that I think that had a lot to do with it. Do you it, think it's it, that or the fact that they had blackmail? He, he had a bit of a cold for a while, and then he went in, and he was allegedly in intensive care, and we were all supposed to yeah. be very concerned. He came out of that thing, and he turned on a dime, and all of a sudden, everything he said before 
herd immunity, yeah. masks don't work. Yeah. Why would we? But here I am shaking hands with people still because all, it's all a load of old crap. That's yeah. where he was. Yep. He turned on a dime, whatever they gave him or whatever they had. Or what they have on it. It's probably an Epstein Island video with like, hey, listen, bro, <laughs> we got this video of you. But, in the you know, but you know what, though? That is the ultimate, like, that's what we don't know. Yeah. Yes. You know, that's what we don't know. And it's a very, very effective method. Yeah. Because you're coming here saying, hey, listen, man, you're 60 some years old. Here's what we found on you. How do you want your legacy to end up? We're going to go public with this next week, unless if you don't do dot, dot, dot. Oh, my God. Do you, not, do you not believe that stuff happens? I believe it does. 100% that happens. And then they have you forever because yeah. you have to say the course mm. or else that video or whatever they have on you, that person that's going to come out yeah. is always going to be in your shadow. Well, listen, I mean, credit goes to Kim Kardashian. She made it more than Liz did, 72 days. I know Tyler just put this yeah. up. Uh, 44 days versus 72 days. Is, that kind of, uh, is this a form of recognition from you, Tyler? Yeah, Very sh- shout honorable. out to Kim K and yeah. Adam's best friend. Adam's friend. Adam's good friends with this guy. So, 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 okay. He's doing so, better than Liz so Trust. Here's, here's, here's what I would be curious about. On who's more likely to make a comeback? Him or Netanyahu? I would be very curious to know which one of those two guys. Boris or BB? BB. Ah. Uh, BB or, or uh, Boris, yeah. Well, wouldn't it, I would love it to be BB, but Boris is already on his way back from the Caribbean and doing his hair. Oh, yeah, so he's, he's, ready. Like, he's, he's getting ready. ready. Yeah, his hair just changed. And that means... <laughs> That means big things are afoot. When has he ever changed? I've never yeah. seen him fix his hair. I've okay. never seen him Yesterday fix his hair. Yesterday he had his hair slightly fixed. Seriously? Slightly. Well, <laughs> Liz. I know, I know, I know. Hilarious. Listen, I'm not defending Boris. Liz. Katie, not even but he that. does, I, I guess, intentionally do this to be more of a comment because he's an Oxford man, very smart guy. He's not an idiot. He plays sort of like the bumbling fool. He literally does like a Chris Farley impression, shakes up his hair, and he's like, all right, let's go be British for a second. Exactly. And That's it, true. It's yeah? totally. And that picture, which we can find with Google, I'm supporting this now, I'm not having a go. If you get Boris on Zipwire, um, that's that. That to me is the. What, this was what, him when he was London mayor, and it's the epitome of how Boris wanted to present himself. Right. So he's up on the zip wire. Look there. Oh God. And then the zip wire went wrong. Oh no. And got, this is him <laughs> stuck. This that is, is stuck hilarious. On the zip wire. But in many ways, it was all of our favourite moment because it was London at its best. We that's were just hilarious. about to have the uh, Olympic Games, <laughs> and he's stuck up there on a bloody zip wire. And uh, uh, just really quick, Pat, I wanted, I wanted to ask Katie, too. So, Katie, I mean, there's a lot happening with, you know, Nanyahu maybe coming back, Boris coming back, uh, what's your name of resigning? What about the, the Georgia Maloney? They, I know. They, I I love, you were going to say. I love, they consider her far <laughs> Every article that I've read from BBC to everybody, she's this far right. <laughs> she's going to start a war. It's all bad. <laughs> but it's in a couple hours, I guess there's, they're going to, the, the brutal, the, 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 it's going to switch today, isn't it? Yes. Where they're going to give her power today. It's the How best do you feel about thing. her? I love her. I love her. I love the fact she's Italian. I love the fact she's called Maloney. Which hey. is like, Maloney. Yeah, like, like pizzas coming out of the oven. Come on. Oh, I love the fact that if you're an asshole and you believe in Google, <laughs> then you uh, believe she's far right. Whereas actually she's so perfectly excellent in all her ways. And she's also backed up because of the way the Italian voting system works. She has a Salvini as well. Matteo Salvini, yeah. who I've met, who's the greatest man. He's going to be like her sidekick. Almost. Oh, wow. There's like a band of them. Awesome. So it's perfect. And also we had the same in Sweden, Swedish Democrats. Yep. So we're, we're in a, having a good run. This run is going to be. She, she's a, the difference between her and a Liz or Boris, she seems like a real Ooh. conservative oh, that's going to stand up. She doesn't. She seems fearless. I love her. I mean, her. so far, Adam, may, you know, yeah. said something. He says, look, we have no clue who this person is. This just yeah. came out of nowhere. Yeah. So far, she seems very fearless. Uh, very clear in her messaging, Grace. backbone. Yeah. She's, and if you watch like her speeches in front of the Italian Beautiful. crowds, I watched Lime, it ten times. I know. Yeah. It made you cry. It makes me I, cry. I was just, I, it, it was it was like a speaker. Like I, it was just. I listened to every single. I mean, I had to read it, but it was passionate. I, I, it might be BS or whatever. Like Adam, I feel you, but I believe her. Vinny, what Vinny did is Vinny was so impressed that he started looking if she has any daughters because he yes, entry he wants. I love it. I look at Tali. Yeah. My name is Vinny. Yeah. Hey, Milan. Good work. I'm in love. The word on the street is Good you've work. actually been hanging out with more Italian people around town here. 100%. Uh, 100%. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> We're to Lucci, a lot of these restaurants. Yeah. Yeah. I, nobody believes when I say I'm Middle Eastern. They're like, yeah, yeah, all right. Witness protection. Let me give you the next <laughs> one. So, UK energy bills to rise by 80% in October as a regulator announces hike. Uh, British energy regulator announced Friday it will, rise, uh, uh, will raise its main cap on consumer energy bills. To an average of three thousand five hundred forty-nine pounds forty-one hundred ninety-seven U.S. dollars, 
from 1971 last year. So from 1971 to 35, that's nearly, that's 88, 80 plus percent. Uh, as campaign groups, think tanks and politicians call on the government to tackle a cost of living crisis, the price cap limits the standard uh, energy, uh, standard charge energy suppliers can build domestic customers for their combined electricity and gas in England. It covers around 24 million households. The 4.5 million households on prepayment plans face an increase from $2,017 to $3,608. That's real money. Yeah, it's, it's wild. So energy bills are now well beyond the means of most people in the UK. People are turning off their energy at source, so at the point where it enters their home. People are living now with candles. People are, have head torches so they don't turn the lights on. And elderly people are not going to have their heating on. And we're at minus two degrees. You know, we're not living in Florida. Yeah, that's right. So, I mean, it's a shocking state of affairs. And in a country that is perpetually grey and cold, not being able to have light or heat. I, I don't honestly know. We will lose people this winter. And then all the while, there's just this circus going on at number 10 of who's going to be the next leader. Mm. Well, it's more who's going to survive the next week without heating or light. I mean, it's, it is properly dark. It's properly Dickensian. Wow. Yeah, no, listen, if you got money to use, like, yeah, it's, who cares? Like 1800 yes. bucks, it's not a big deal. But if you're middle income, you're low income, you're sitting there. You're retired telling, without yeah, an ability that's to a, over. That's a, that's, a big, that's a big nut to pay to say it's going to go up that much. And, and by the way, what can cause it to um, go back down? Like what, what needs to happen for this to go lower? Obviously, it's uh, uh, relationships with Russia. some of the causes. Russia, some of the causes they're saying is different places. But what needs to happen for this to go lower? Yeah, there's this idea, and it was being kind of – put up as this uh, something, the bad guy. You know, we always want a bad guy in a panto. So we're using Russia, right? We're using Putin. Putin price hike and all that. Oh, yeah, blah, blah, yeah. blah, blah. But, yeah. you know, in fact, we only ever got 5% of our gas from Putin in the first place. So that can't be responsible for an eightfold or fivefold increase. Um, gas, um, green taxes, the green agenda. If you wipe that out, that would be half the bills gone. You know, so the green kind of agenda that's being pushed is one of the reasons we're paying for everything so you know, price prohibitively because the taxation is off the chart. And then what we need to do is push forwards with nuclear or push forwards with new supplies or push forward and reopen some of the coal or whatever, oil or whatever, that we shut down. And clearly energy is not my field, but we need to increase supply and pull back on green taxation. Those are the only two levers we would have. Yeah, I'd, I'd be uh, I'd be curious to know what the cause is like to go up that high that sudden during the season we're in. So it, it wouldn't make sense for the average person to say it has to be the war between Russia. It has to be the Nord Stream pipeline. It has to be all these things because it wasn't the case two years ago. And this wasn't happening two years ago. Yeah. But in fact, they just there was this price cap and they it, they took the price cap off. So the energy companies can charge effectively what they want. And then the wrong time to do it. The profits of those, yeah. uh, you know, oil giants have been huge. Yeah. Even the, the Germans are being told to stop whining, wear two sweaters <laughs> and have candles and flashlights ready in Jeez. case of blackouts this winter. Like this is a very, you know, nice, gentle, warm you know, uh, uh, empathetical re leadership message being sent out. The guys just go wear two sweaters. It's going to be all right. <laughs> That's basically the same oh in our country. God. And they're warning us of three hour, you know, very much like California, yeah. uh, the rolling blackouts. South yeah. Africa has the same three hour blackouts we're, we're expecting this winter. It's it's a it's a Crazy wild days. it's a it's definitely a wild uh, wild uh, situation that's going on there with uh, with this. So okay, now let's go to U.S. politics with U.S. politics that uh, is going on here. When uh, Biden got elected, okay, everybody was you know oh my God it's going to be the end of the you know it's going to be horrible it's going to be this it's going to be that. Fast forward to where we are today. Is it exactly what you expected it to be? Is it worse? Is it not as bad as you expected it to be? As a respectful foreigner, and bearing in mind you've chased our British asses out of this fine country twice before. Uh, someone told me it was three times, but um, it's, I think it's absolutely worse than expected. I, I, I think we knew it would be awful. Watching the installation of him, I was, what, one of 20 people gathered around a side gate because nobody was in D.C. because it was basically a, a war zone, mm -hmm. uh, fabricated war zone. And then you have a man who... It is so, 
you know, no one knows what's going to come out of his mouth at any given time. He's just sort of sort, seems to have kind of some kind of Tourette's or something. He just squeals out <laughs> about inflation or whatever. Yeah. We don't know what's going on. Then you look at the border and the fact that we just have illegals piling into your country. We have ridiculous rules in place, like I can't currently be here in this country because unvaccinated people are still not allowed in America as we speak. Uh, you have inflation at record rates. You have fuel prices that are at record highs. I, I'm, fa I'm failing to see what's been good about this administration. Yeah. And in a recession, well, mind you, we're, we're, we're not that bad because they changed the definition in real time of a recession. We're sending literally, how much is it so far, Tyler, to Ukraine? How many billions? Three trillion. Uh, Three point two trillion. To Ukraine? No, trillion. To, trillion. to no, Ukraine, no, I trillion. think, well, this just has passed. To Google Ukraine? We had to Google, Google that. I think Ukraine the past year, it's 80, 50 to $80 billion. We're such in bad shape. Billion or trillion? No, not, bill not, not trillion. This was March was funding bill with Ukraine. This was March 10th. So when you just said not, we not trillion. We did not send $1.5 trillion to Ukraine. So hold bill on. With this, wait, can I just let, say, this was Googled, but this is not right now. There's a lot you can Google that's accurate, Katie. But one, but, but this, you dis this, this you disagree with, so this isn't. I'm right. just saying we did not send 1.5 trillion. Well, they just passed the bill because I mean, right now we're at 80 billion. Yeah, well, there's a big difference between oh, no, 1.5 trillion and 80 billion. Oh yeah, guys. No, that's, that's I said trillions. Yeah, that's a bill that they just passed that we are going two, to at some 3. point. 3.2 trillion. It's not going to stop. But my, well, my point being is 3.2 trillion to Ukraine, guys. No, you have to get an accurate you number. Said of what no. we said. Oh, how what's going to be accurate? Something you agree with. CBS. Let's just see a fact, Katie. I don't know. You just saw a headline. You yeah. are sending money to... Yeah. So now we believe in headlines. Yeah, I, I remember the number being f uh, somewhere around $60 billion. But I've, well, everything true. I've seen okay. is 70 to 80, but I... I'm, Guys, I'm looking. I, I mean, I'm, I don't need to be a mathematician. You're saying 70 to 80 billion, and we're talking about trillions. Trillion. We know how m numbers work here, guys. Is it billion or trillion? I, Which is I, it? it's billions right now, but what she said, from what I think, what you're saying is, Katie, they they passed a bill in March that's saying they're going to give them up to 1.2 trillion dollars. It's not going to stop. But but my going back to my point is, if we're such in bad shape and everything's going downhill so fast, yes. how do we have the gall to send <laughs> yes. them? So that was one of my points I didn't ask earlier: is what what is our goal on on helping them so much? What we, what why are we so invested in yeah. this war? And mind you, it was only a two week thing where I saw. The Ukraine ribbons and every website was <laughs> Ukraine. And then Keeping Up the Kardashians came on and people were like, the hell with Ukraine, what's happening with Kim's vagina? Because that's what sold people's attention span. So that's why I was so very true. It's true. Like, it's so true. We're the same in the UK. So these people that had flags up for our socialized health system. Two weeks. System, ee, yeah. For NHS. And then they took those down and put up Ukraine flags. Every week. Ee. Every week is something different. And then the people who brought in Ukraine refugees realized they didn't really like Ukraine people and were trying yeah. to get them out yeah, of their weird. houses. Yeah. It was pretty funny. Weird. Yeah, no, it's not. It's not up to 1.2 trillion, Vinny. I want to make what? sure we get that right. Okay. That, that 1.2 trillion, 1.5 trillion dollars under it was a portion going to Ukraine, portion going to pandemic, portion going to agencies. I want to say we're on the $70 billion number, give or take, to Ukraine thus far. $70 um, billion, dollars, 70 which is billion. in a recession, we, we have... Oh, no enough. one's saying, no one's, that's real money. I'm okay, just saying yeah. it's not $1.5 trillion okay. to... Uh, uh, one and a half trillion, we can buy Ukraine. We don't even. We just going to say, hey, <laughs> yeah. you're ours. Come over that's, here, forget that's, Putin. That's literally that's my point. Yeah. They yeah, passed a one point five trillion spending got bill, you, which you. was yeah. health care and social security Everything and a involved. million. And then a percentage of that, a good chunk. not the full one point yeah. five trillion, Katie. It, it wasn't health care and social Ukraine. security. That's not what he just said. You added. There that. were I, no. I'm saying there were other parts yes, of the bill, but don't add in what those are, like social security. Make it sound like it's going to Americans. It won't be. Of the 1.5 trillion, 80 billion went to Ukraine. Okay, yes. so that means there's 1.425 trillion. Okay? Are you okay that with didn't 80, go to Ukraine? 80 billion going to Ukraine at a time when Americans can't afford to put gas in their cars. I'm, it's a bit silly. We I'm can not, agree that. I'm can not. Agree that? I'm 100 zero money to anybody when there's as a well, veteran to veteran. Katie, dying. That's a that. that's a different conversation. That's I'm, do you I'm agree that we should spend any still, money to Ukraine? I'm still that they're on 3.2. But I appreciate you. You just went from 1.5 trillion no, to 3.2 trillion. 3.2 trillion was the always one, the my 1. number. 1.5 is the bill that's from from March. Correct. Yeah. There's, so there's, you're saying I just want to be clear here. I'm not being an asshole. You're saying that we actually sent 3.2 trillion, trillion dollars to Ukraine. I believe that's where you're at. 
No, that's not where I'm at. You're no, saying, no, I believe that's where the number is at. That's what my I would love is. a fact check. Use a DuckDuckGo, use a Google, use a Bing. I don't care. I think that's a highly inaccurate number. There's no way we spent three point two trillion dollars on ukraine katie the number the number 3.2 katie you may be mixing it up and and i'm totally fine if i'm wrong the 3.2 is how much we spend in afghanistan in 20 years that number is three trillion dollars we spent 20 years in afghanistan i think when it comes down to ukraine i do think it's 70 to 80 billion dollars it's and maybe we can get to a point of agreement which is would americans choose to spend that money in ukraine listen no No. that, that part is a complete different discussion which is like we got 32 and a half, 32,000, give or take, uh, uh, veterans who are homeless right now. We can easily spend some of that money 100%. to take care of that. These are guys that put their lives on the line to Dying in the give us freedom. We're that, both veterans, yeah. by the way, Katie. So we're, we're in the same boat. We're okay, though. There's 32,000 of them that are, 32, of them that, are home. that money can be spent elsewhere. My, my biggest concern with Ukraine was how suddenly that became our number one priority in the world of what's going on there. And in Iran, which you're supposed like the feminist, true feminists are supposed to be more about concern about Iran than Ukraine, because Putin is not targeting women. Mm-hmm. Putin's targeting a country. The Iranian government is targeting women mm-hmm. and, and women's rights. That's what Americans, feminists are like. I'm all about taking care of women. And this is where the priorities don't make sense. They're not looking at what's going on in Iran, not helping out yeah. the people. They're looking out over here. You know, look. The the one thing you said about Rand Paul and yesterday, even when we talked to Kurt Schilling about the fact that people talk to these guys, I feel like nothing's getting done. I love what Rand Paul said at the end of the discussion with uh, Anthony Fauci. When Anthony Fauci said what he said, Rand Paul finished it. He says, uh, history will reveal uh, whether you were right or wrong. History will not favor you. Some statement like that because history is not going to favor him. And, and the other part in regards to voting I used to be from the same mindset. I want to make sure the audience doesn't uh, uh, believe that. Uh, uh, and I'm going to challenge it. You can challenge it back. I think voting is super necessary because if you think nothing changes, Roe v. Wade and what just happened a few months ago or last year, whatever the time was, a few months ago, 10 months ago, 12 months ago, is a byproduct of flipping three seats under one term, which has never happened so voting has a lot of power if you control Supreme Court. 6-3 is the reason why Roe v. Wade uh, is no longer a thing, and states get to decide how they want to treat abortion. Mm-hmm. So I do think voting has a lot of power. I think what is going to happen this midterms, why it matters. Say Democrats keep S- Senate and Republicans keep H- House. House. Guess what that means? There's a gridlock. So now if it's a gridlock, that actually favors the people because nothing crazy out of whack can pass. So that's why a lot of people are out there like yourself, going out there running around, talking and, and promoting and Herschel Walker and whoever it is you're uh, uh, spending time with because it actually matters today a lot. Like we need nothing to happen for it. I know people are, well, you know, we need actually sometimes nothing happening is better than Something things bad. happening that are bad. I agree. So sometimes you just kind of like, like – don't do shit for two years. Mm-hmm. Just be there. You're our president for the rest of your life. Biden last name is going to be remembered in U.S. history books. It's going, not going to be obviously as but the is, best is president that, ever. Is that good enough for you? No, it's not. Believe is me, it I, just you're not someone that just no. just be there. Shut up. Don't say anything. No. Don't oh. screw up anymore. Is that really what an American is really it's asking the, from this, from his well, president? It's this, no way. Nobody's asking that. But the reality of it is, he's the president, and you know he has the power to do a lot of different things that. You, he's in for four years. You can talk whatever you want with election. You can talk whatever you want with, you know, is he going to wake up one morning and pull off a Liz Truss? Well, some people don't want that to happen because then no, that means I, Kamala's I, the president. I, I, I yeah. started the bit before oh, that. God. Is he going to wake up one morning? I pray to God not. Hmm? Oh, you're going there. <laughs> I've gone there. Yeah. I went there before he there. got I, I, I want, you, a lot of people don't want that. Because you get the, Kamala. Kamala, no, Kamala yeah, people in. don't want that. No. You, you actually don't want that. genuinely Kamala. want him to die? Oh, no, I just, you know, I prefer he wasn't ever installed as the president. I just think it's a real pity that the greatest country on the face of planet Earth has a demented old man who doesn't know where he is being put in as president. That seems. Sh- I, do you love Biden? You want him as your president? No, I'm not. I'm not a Biden lover, no. but I'm not also not a Trump supporter. So, yeah. you know, I'm a little conflicted. Yeah. So, so okay, real quick question, because I'm still kind of I, who do you think uh, I know it's, it's still early. Who do you think is going to run? And there's been a lot of people that are like, 
Because I, I remember when, um, who's, who's the girl that flipped recently? Tulsa Gabbard. Tulsa Gabbard. I, like, people are like, maybe if, VP. you know, DeSantis gets it, maybe Papa's the VP. And there's been so much, like, speculation. What, what, do you th- what do you think and what do you, what do you want and what do you think? Is going to happen. I want uh, DeSantis with Tulsa Gabbard as the VP because she brings women, she'll bring Democrats, she'll bring the independents. DeSantis will bring the fire uh, and will be a unifier. That's what I want. Mm, What do do I think will happen? I think Trump will put a run in. It will be a massively split issue and someone else will prevail. But I don't know who that is. Got you. When you say someone else, you mean on the left? No, a different candidate would make it through. You're saying that if Trump runs, someone else could beat him? Yes, I believe that's true. Really? Who do you think could beat Trump? Well, I mean, I'm the foreigner, aren't I? There'll be people <laughs> screaming. Listen, oh, Katie, we, know, Katie we we have, we've already known you have no nope. problem sticking your yeah. toes in other people's business. <laughs> I love it. So why stop now? Who do you think is going to beat Trump? Well, I believe DeSantis could beat Trump, absolutely. I don't think Pence could. I don't think a Youngkin could yet. No. He's not well known enough. No. No. I think Gavin Newsom's already picking out the kind of drapes for yeah, the he's White going. House. Well, he's he thinks going. he's there, right? Gavin yeah. Newsom's definitely already picking out other people's skin that he could wear <laughs> in his fucking he, American he, psycho he walked, costume. Did you see that video? He walked, when uh, Biden, I don't know where Biden was, overseas somewhere, Newsom took off his jacket, he's walking right. in the White House, he's like, oh yeah, it's he all posed, set up. He yeah. posed with like a baby. A baby, he's like, like, come on, bro. <laughs> Biden's dog, he's like, get out of there, you're not, you're not here yet. No, it's formidable. Say he's whatever formidable. you guys want. Yeah. He's formidable, he's marketable, you know, oh. they, they're gonna... Newsom? I, Newsom's I, gonna I, be uh, the guy. Oh, what? So he's uh, running for sure. Guys, so, running. he is... I didn't t- I didn't say anything about policies. Mm-hmm. Anything. Zero. You just said 80% of people in America, you know, 80% of people, you know, have to look at themselves in the mirror, right? So people don't vote based on policies. People vote on who looks good, who sounds good, yeah. who can give a good one-liner, who can give some Unfortunately, that's how a lot of people I end. totally agree with you. Yeah, but so that's how people decide. So that that guy is extra to un- look the same way people underestimated Trump who hate there's a lot of people that hate Trump, right? And they were underestimating him. And sure. people people like yourself or Coulter or a lot of people were going out there and saying, Watch, you're gonna eat your words. Watch you. and you remember the day when they announced the, the face when they, when the they, heads were popping off. Girls were, were tears. Were, school schools were closed and they were bringing in uh, emotional animals like pet the zebra in the back because you're gonna kill yourself. And I had to, I had to go on stage. I'm a, I'm a comedian. I went on stage in Colorado and there was people like two right. people in the back crying. They were bringing like. Sheep and dog and like like emotional support animals to co- to college universities because yeah. people couldn't take it. My favorite was when I was watching CNN and they had to. It was on election night when Trump had won, mm-hmm. um, which I'd argue he did last time as well. But um, yeah. uh, when he won and they were trying to call Pennsylvania and it was like they had some sort of facial palsy <laughs> because they just couldn't. Yeah. Make, they they couldn't bring themselves yeah. to call it. It was so funny. It was amazing. <laughs> So um, can I say one thing about Newsom? Yeah. I'm not a California guy, but I've, I've been pretty explicit about how that cringy oh. J- July 4th ad that he did. Oh, yeah. Uh, he definitely looks the part. I'm not a big Newsom fan. I actually think he's annoying. He definitely looks the part. Good looking guy. He's 6'3", by the way, Katie. So that's, you know, yeah, not a go. short guy. So you'll probably like him. Well, if However, you, if you slept with Kimberly Kilfoyle, you're out already. He's done. Hey, he's well, done. that's Donald Trump Jr.'s current girlfriend. Know, so it's that. pretty Listen. pathetic. However... He does look the part. So if you're just looking on optics, we all know that situation with JFK versus uh, Nixon back in the day that if you're listening on radio, you're like, well, Nixon won this. But if you're watching on TV, JFK was the guy, clearly. So visual and markability is a big thing. I also think on the flip side, these days, and this is kudos to Trump and a lot of people that, you know, why they like him is he's at least authentic. And Gavin Newsom strikes me as the least authentic just cringy politician out there like hi i'm here to tell you that like it's just so phony and it's so fake and it's so fucking corny and inauthentic and i think if you're just judging a book by its cover he kind of has that vibe but if you actually listen to what he's got going on you're i don't think the american people and who here's my other question adam and i and i I respect adam because as much as he hates trump he can say something like i understand why like trump i'm not a fan i I never said hate but when you can say stuff like you understand you got the policies you got the it was the person it was the image it was the cover of the book. So that's why I understand what you're saying with Newsom. And I was going to ask you, Katie, who would, if it's going to be him, and I, Biden says he's going to, I don't think so, who's going to run? Who's going to be the <laughs> second one to go? 
Who's in the, who's the second? To so Newsom to, to try to be the president of the Democratic Party. On the party. left? Yeah, on the left. I have yeah. my idea. You Who got, do you think? I want to know. I want to say Obama. You You're not saying Michelle. Oh, I think if Michelle runs, she She wins 100%. Oh, she wins. Michelle runs, she wins. But do you think she runs? No. I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm less than 10% on Michelle Ryan. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, I, if, if she, if, if she is asking friends and family, like people that, and people that she values their opinion, I, I don't know if you're going to have a better life than the one you do. If it's purely for history, go for it. But you're young, like yeah. go enjoy 30. They can enjoy 30 years of an unbelievable life mm-hmm. at the young age that they have parties life enjoy they can do that now if it's about history she's hillary's not in michelle's league i think michelle can hold her own i think she can talk she can communicate she can sell she can edify yeah but i think there's i think there's quietly behind closed doors i don't know why is there no chance pat that that hillary runs i think this is the season this the season (laughs) for some you know, out of nowhere candidates to choose to run that actually have a good chance to become the nominee on the left. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think on the right. I don't think on the right. I don't think anybody stands a chance to be ahead of uh, Trump uh, and DeSantis. No but on the left, I think Mark Cuban, this is a good time. Mm-hmm. I think Rock, this is a good time, although he won't do it. No. I think uh, Michelle, this is a fantastic time. But I think this is a season like even those Hollywood stars and billionaires who have a name for themselves. This is a very, very good time. I'll make a prediction. I think Cuban's going to step away from a uh, apprentice, and he's going to go spend time with his family. Shark Tank. And then, shark. Yeah. He, I'm sorry. A pr- shark Tank. Uh, uh, shark Tank, yeah. And he's going to come back, and he's going to say, after spending time with my family, they've encouraged me to want to run because they think America has a lot of problems, and they believe I can solve it and I have a plan. And all of a sudden, in the next 9, 12 months, you're gonna hear him make an announcement. Mark Cuban. I think so. And, and by the way, Whoa, I tell you, what? I tell you one thing. Yeah. I, I, um, he's a capitalist, but he's also he's a he's a liberal. Mm-hmm. He's, a, he's he's a guy on the left, but he's not a socialist. He is a capitalist. Uh, I think he has a chance to actually be somebody on that side. I fully agree with you, and yeah. I would vote for a Mark Cuban as far as that over a Biden or a Trump or anything divisive like that. Mm-hmm. Would any you day vote of the week, Cuban over DeSantis. Um, I that I would generally want to see them on the stage together and have an unbiased, general, like gen, like genuinely okay. curiosity, curious mind to see what they have to say. I would actually appreciate that. Let me let me put it to you this way: I didn't say I support. I just said I think they would run. I'm not sitting here telling you I'm supporting a uh, a Cuban running or not. I'm not because he's mm-hmm. still is a person that is going to lean more towards shutdown, things like that. So just so you know, like government That's, laws mm-hmm. and all of that, that is not something that I'm, I'm uh, you know, I think DeSantis will be like how Florida was during COVID is how America would be if DeSantis was president. Oh, mm-hmm. So just think about that. But if Cuban is president and another COVID happens, it's going to happen what happened with uh, the shutdown. But That's that, the part. That's what I want to ask you guys. That's you, the part. You're bringing so, up Cuban because at the end of the day, you know that it's a realistic possibility he could win. You're not saying it's not a far fetched idea. No, no, I'm not saying. Correct. I'm not saying I would support or not. I'm not saying I. Would I'm not support asking it. support. You're saying it's 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 something that's feasible. Oh, let me plausible. It, let, let me put it to you this way: He is a fool if he doesn't run. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, he's a fool if he doesn't run. If he's ever had, which I, I mm-hmm. again, gut feeling. I don't know the guy. We don't have a relationship. Uh, I, we've done a you know, one time I did an interview with him and he was kind enough to uh, uh, have me go to his office in American Airlines. We sat down. We had a great two hour conversation. Brilliant guy. Smart guy. If he's ever found the perfect opening to go run, today's the time right to now. do it. And, 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 he, and here's my question. I want to ask all of you guys. If somebody like him does come in, is he backing out of any of these policies that we've been seeing for these two years is the border going to get okay is anything really going to change or he's going to just keep riding this train well, let me let, that's me, not let me tell you what what i think he would do he would actually talk to the people like he would be on twitter saying he, he's going to give you his you know what he believes needs to happen to the border he's not going to be hiding okay but mm-hmm. cuban's not going to be hiding mm-hmm. you know how quickly he would respond to an email i would send him like i couldn't believe how quick he would respond at 2 o'clock in the morning, one time him and I are email, emailing each other back, 30 seconds, boom, 30 seconds back. So he is like, he's like this. He's on the ball. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a guy 
that will actually circulate amongst the troops. Like he'll fly out and go meet with people. He'll sit down. He'll do those types of things. Mm-hmm. Uh, him. But I think he's going to be more pro-shutdown. I think he's going to be more pro, you know, control. I think he's going to be more pro that of the mindset. And I think that doesn't sit well with people who like what DeSantis uh, Got you. and some others. That's, well. I, that's why I moved here. Okay? I moved here four, four months ago to, to come here at work for Pat. And I left California. And this is when you t- with DeSantis, like you light up just like me. That's one of the main reasons that I was like, yeah, I'll come here. And that's one of my things about Newsom is I get that he's so marketable. I get that he's a brilliant speaker. But half of California or whatever is statistically accurate, leaving California, they, you can't get a U-Haul truck mm-hmm. to get you from California to Florida anymore. Mm-hmm. And you can get paid to bring a U-Haul truck back from Florida. Oh, they're all over here. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. You cannot, oh, that's amazing. You what is it, the first time in 100 years they've had a net... Uh, yeah. Sort of. What's the term? Uh, net... Uh, Really? Net vacancy? Oh, yeah. well, people like, leaving the country? Yeah. Well, we have a guest yeah. here with us, so let's let's if we can uh, turn our attentions over to our guest. If uh, we haven't already, uh, the Zoom's been switched over to him. Uh, look, I'm excited about uh, having uh, uh, Professor Matthew Bunn on for a couple different reasons. You know, he practices uh, professor of the practice of energy, national security, and foreign policy. Let me once again. Uh, give a, a formal, proper introduction. He's an American nuclear and energy poli- policy analyst, currently a professor of practice at the Harvard Kennedy School at Harvard University, co-principal investigator of the Belfer Center Project on Managing the Atom, and his father, George Bunn, was a leading figure in the field of arms control who helped draft and negotiate the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty of 1968, limiting the spread of nuclear weapons worldwide. Uh, Matthew Bunn, it's good to have you on. If you can hear us, let us know if you can hear us. You look like you're frozen. Can you hear me? Okay, I can hear you now. I can hear you now. Can you hear us or no? I can hear you. Um, Let me know if you'd rather I turn off my video. That might uh, help a little bit. You're actually fine now. Whatever you're doing now, it's fine. So it's it's good to have you on. I you know we got an article that came in and the team was talking about it where uh, somebody asked you a question, how likely is a Russian nuclear strike in Ukraine? And this was on October 2nd, 2022, uh, an NPR article. Your answer was, we have a 77-year tradition, some call it a taboo, of a non-use of nuclear weapons. Russia is threatening that. And uh, you went on to say a few different things. We need to do everything we can to maintain that tradition of not using nuclear weapons in combat. So there's a lot of talks about this, whether you know it'll get there or not. A lot of people are concerned. Uh, you're hearing words being thrown around of a World War III, and that's been trending on Twitter on a few different days. From your perspective of somebody that's been in this, your father's been in this, this has been your topic of discussion for your entire life. How likely is it that we'll get there that uh, a Putin or someone will take the first initiative of turning into a nuclear war? So I don't think we're going to get to uh, a World War III where the United States and Russia are lobbing nuclear weapons at each other. They are both highly, highly motivated not to do something that could lead to the end of both countries as functioning societies. What I'm more worried about is the possibility that Russia might use a few nuclear weapons in Ukraine uh, itself. Um, The United States uh, has said uh, that it would respond in ways that were catastrophic for Russia. Uh, What I'm hearing is not a nuclear response, but rather uh, uh, political, economic sanctions, but also conventional military uh, responses uh, in that event. But we would have to expect that Russia would then respond to that. And the situation could get quite dangerous. Nonetheless, I think it's very, very unlikely we'd end up ending up with anything remotely resembling what people think of as World War III. Got it. So World War III to you would be as if U.S. got involved. How likely is it if a Pearl Harbor type of a situation happens when Japan attacks us and then a few years later that happened under FDR and a few years later under Truman, he decides to nuke them. And it's the only time this has happened two times in the history of mankind where we've actually nuked a place. <clears throat> How likely is it that this will be only between Russia and Ukraine where Putin to save face and how the world is pitching him at the end of his career to say, 
this is not going to be happening. He nukes Ukraine, and then there's a you know a, agreement, and it's mm-hmm. over it versus a World War Three. So I think there are a number of different ways it could play out, uh, very few of which lead to World War III. The reality is uh, Russia has thousands of nuclear weapons. Uh, The United States has thousands of nuclear weapons. Each of them are highly, highly motivated not to lob nuclear weapons at the other. Uh, But in Ukraine, uh, Putin can't afford to lose politically, and he is losing at the moment, and he has threatened that he would use all weapons at his disposal if the Ukrainians uh, attacked areas that he considers now part of Russia, which the Ukrainians are highly motivated to do. Now, is that a bluff? Possibly. I think there's only maybe a 10, 20 percent chance that he would use a few nuclear weapons in Ukraine. He might use them for coercion. Uh, He might, you know, use a few Uh, on a battlefield and then say, unless you agree to my terms, I'm going to start hitting cities next. Uh, So that's what we have to put up with. I think the United States might get involved in that circumstance, not with nuclear weapons, but using conventional strikes, for example, on the units that carried out the uh, nuclear strikes in Ukraine. How how uh, how do you feel about the way President Biden and our administration is handling the situation with Russia, specifically when it comes down to, you know, how we're how we're handling the relationship with Putin in this case, where the approach we're taking, uh, the average person that doesn't follow politics, doesn't read Wall Street Journal, doesn't watch CNN or Fox News or any of that stuff. To them, the average person that's having watching football on Sunday and the topic of Putin comes up, they they throw him in the category of dictators and people in the past that have done a lot of harm to a lot of people. But, you know, some people are split in, in saying, look, this guy is his priority is Russia. He never wanted to go into World War Three. His main thing is the history of Ukraine. It was part of Russia. Whoever negotiated it before, he wasn't a part of it. He's a true loyalist to what USSR once was, and he just wants his land back, and he wants everybody in the world to stay out of it, and NATO to stop, you know, trying to recruit Ukraine back to him. Why are you doing that? I told you that's the one thing I don't want you to do. So from your optics, how would you, uh, uh, how would you view how President Biden's been handling it, and what Putin's uh, motivation is behind this whole situation that we're in right now? Well, I'm sorry to say part of your question, I would argue, is uh, reflecting the success of Russian propaganda. Um, Ukraine is an independent sovereign country. Russia has agreed that for decades that Ukraine is an independent sovereign country. Um, And under the United Nations Charter, countries are not allowed to just invade their neighbors and seize chunks of their land. That was the fundamental thing that the United Nations was established to prevent. And now we have a founding member of the United Nations with uh, a veto on the Security Council waging aggressive war uh, on its neighbor. So uh, I do think overall, I would give the Biden administration quite high ratings. They have uh, used uh, selective uh, release of U.S. intelligence to um, warn the world of what Russia was about to do and make it more difficult for various uh, Russian disinformation campaigns uh, to succeed because the world was warned ahead of time that they were going to happen. They have um, sort of increased over time the supplies to Ukraine and the kinds of weapons we've been willing to offer Ukraine and managed to avoid escalation with Russia. I think that we are going to end up in a big debate between people who say, you know, what Putin has done is just evil. We've got to push back. We've got to hold him accountable. And people who say, whoa, he's got thousands of nuclear weapons. It's dangerous to be in a situation where we have total hatred between our countries. It's not good for us, not good for the world. Uh, and I think there's going to be a tension between those two equally legitimate arguments uh, over the months to come. Last question here for you, unless if the panel here has a question. You know, sometimes... When this conversation comes up and and you're with friends and you got Republicans in there, you got Democrats in there, you got independents in there, you got those who don't give a shit in there, right? They're just talking to each other 
and we all have friends and family when we're by ourselves talking, uh, you know, uh, some will say, well, Pat, you say what you want, but Donald Trump, when he was president, there was no war. Nobody thought about ISIS, you know, Palestine and Israel. Look at all the stuff that he did, and everybody was afraid that was going to be World War III under Trump, but that never was a trending topic on Twitter, et cetera, et cetera. Look what Biden is doing. He's causing World War III. We can potentially go there, and look how much problems we're having on the way we left Afghanistan. And by the way, these are people, some people that are saying this are people on the left that are saying this. You know, Matt Zeller, former CIA agent who, you know, on Brian Williams talked about, hey, the way we left Afghanistan, that shouldn't have been the right way to leave. There's a lot of people that are not happy about the way we've handled things under a Biden administration. And a lot that were hoping that a Biden would have been somebody that would have been more peaceful, less war, less issues. But it seems like every other day you turn on the news, there is some kind of issues going on, whether it's Afghanistan, whether it's Iran, whether it's Ukraine, whether it's Russia. You know, so what do you say to the people that say under Trump, U.S. was more at peace and less fear of war was there? And under Biden, it's been constant fear of potential war. What do you say to those people? Uh, Well, I respectfully disagree. Um, The reality is in 2017, as soon as Trump came to power, he launched a massive crisis with North Korea that almost led to war. Um, And it's absurd, I would argue, to blame uh, Biden for Putin's uh, aggressive decision to invade Ukraine. Um, Putin has been planning this for some time, including during the Trump administration. Uh, So uh, I think this is in Putin's lap. He wants to grab more land that doesn't belong to him. Uh, And the world has appropriately stood up to that aggression. Uh, The United Nations General Assembly just voted overwhelmingly to condemn uh, Russia's annexation of Ukrainian land as illegal (laughs) under international law. Um, And the Biden administration has really done a remarkable job in pulling the NATO alliance together in a way Trump utterly failed to do uh, when Trump was president. Got it. I have a question. Yeah. Um, Just so we're all clear, would you reveal where you lean politically? Are you on the left? Are you on the right? Are you more of a moderate? Are you just a believer in common sense? Are you just an educator? What would you reveal? So uh, I regard myself as a political centrist, but it is true that I have uh, served in the past in Democratic administrations and have largely uh, it offered my advice primarily on the Democratic side. Okay, so does that um, negate you from having having credibility? Uh, I don't think so. I think (laughs) in our country, we need to have bipartisan cooperation on not only national security, but a wide variety of things if we want to have sustainable public policy over time. Unfortunately, in the world that we have today, our country is so polarized that we keep reversing course on policy after policy every time, you know, one party or another takes power. Just just a question before we go to Katie Hopkins. I got one question for you. We had, do do you remember uh, Mr. Uh, 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 Peter Pry? Yep. Okay, we, we had him on a couple times. Uh, yeah, rest in peace. He just passed yeah, away, passed away uh, about a month ago. A, a month and a half ago, two months ago. He just I don't know oh, if you knew I that or not. He just passed Peter away. Passed. Yeah, Peter, did you know no, Peter Pry? No, but you just broke that news. So. Oh, yeah, he just passed away two months ago. We had him on the podcast twice twice in a span of a month, and then two months later he passed away. Crazy. Uh, uh, he, are you familiar with what his belief system, what, the, what, what he believed uh, uh, he viewed the nuclear uh, threat uh, that we had. Uh, did, did you and him speak regularly? Because I, I like what you just said right now where Adam said, do you lose credibility to say what you say? And he said, no, you know, this is how America is. We get to sit there and debate and, you know, agree and disagree. And we get to say, well, I agree with Professor Bunn. I agree with Peter Pry. How how different of a worldview did you have when it comes down to nuclear threats from Peter Pry, the late Peter Pry? So I think somewhat different. Um, There are lots of different views in in these uh, areas. Peter was uh, especially concerned, I I would argue, um, uh, almost obsessively concerned about one particular aspect of the nuclear threat, which is the possibility of uh, a hostile state uh, 
detonating a nuclear weapon up in space where it could create a massive electromagnetic pulse that would short out a lot of our electrical systems over much of the United States if it were a big enough bomb detonated in the right uh, place. And Peter did a lot of great work on uh, elucidating that threat, but I would argue that's only one of uh, many nuclear threats uh, that we face. Uh, Got it. Thank you for that, Katie. Um, so my question is about Zelensky and to what extent you think he's actually an authentic or legitimate leader or whether you think perhaps he is, as I believe, um, an actor or a puppet in the sense that he was an actor in rubbers and high heels until relatively recently. And now we're supposed to believe he's Winston Churchill. So my question is about Zelensky. And my second question is, given you say nuclear war is unlikely, to what extent do you think Americans, ordinary Americans, Rust Belt Americans, really care about what's going on in Ukraine? To what extent do you think they could find it on a map? To what extent do you think spending in excess of maybe a billion or a trillion dollars in Ukraine really matters to people who can't put fuel in their car? So uh, two questions. Um, I would argue Zelensky has... Uh, proven to the surprise of many to be uh, a remarkable wartime leader. And partly, I think his um, media experience in the past has allowed him to sort of uh, dominate the information space within Ukraine in a very clever uh, way that has unified the Ukrainians much more than they ever were uh, in the decades leading up to uh, this war. So I think Ukraine is uh, lucky that they happen to have elected this leader. It is somewhat uh, hilarious for Putin to be describing the uh, government of Ukraine as a bunch of Nazis when uh, they elected by uh, a vote of something like 70 percent a Jewish president, uh, Zelensky. Um, I do think you're absolutely right that a lot of Americans don't really care much about what happens in Ukraine, but I think they should because uh, the principle that countries aren't allowed to just invade their neighbors and grab chunks of their land, if that principle goes away, uh, we're in a very, very dangerous world. And um, that was the principle that we all agreed to after World War II. And we want to avoid getting back into situations where we're fighting wars like World War II. I think I think blocking Russia in Ukraine is actually quite important to U.S. national security in the end. Um, and uh, that's going to be playing out over the course of the months. And of course, there is an enormous difference between a billion, which we've already spent more than that, and a trillion, which yep. is a thousand times a billion, we went there. Uh, which is there's no <laughs> prospect of spending remotely that. Say, say those numbers again. What do you think we actually spent? Uh, well, we've spent uh, uh, several billion, I think over 10 billion at this point in uh, military and economic assistance uh, to Ukraine. It's going to be uh, expensive when the war is over uh, for some combination of Ukraine and the international community as a whole to rebuild the place because the amount of damage that's been done is just horrifying. Mm, like a rebuilding plan. We were having a friendly yeah. debate over here of how much money we actually spent or sent to Ukraine. Uh, some of us believe it's in the billions. Some of us believe it's in the trillions. It's Do you have an accurate it, number? It, it, it's not remotely close to the trillions. Trillions is a really big number. Yeah. A trillion is a thousand billion. But you just right? said it's ten billion. Uh, so that seems it's, that it's seems very probably over ten billion at this point. It's but it's not billion. a thousand. It's around seventy billion. It's around seventy billion, give or take. It's it's a lot of money I, that we've spent. I, I don't think that's correct, but well, I, I don't have none of us agree on that. anything. That's what we yeah, can no, tell. But, right. but, we all agree but, it's but, billions, Katie. Disagree. We're not. It's not trillions. Yeah, the, well, he says ten. He says seventy. I say well, trillion. Ten, yeah. 10, yeah. 10, billion 10, billion 10 billion and seventy billion is a lot closer together than one point five trillion. You. Professor Matthew Bond, first of all, thank you so much for taking the time to come in here, giving your perspective. Very helpful. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, different perspective, you know, to see where it's at. And he is more optimistic that nothing's going to be happening. So it's interesting to see what happens there. Um, 
Go ahead. You're no, going to no, say no, something. Yeah, well, Pat, uh, well, going back to... But, 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 what, what, what is weird what? to me what? is that to him, it's only $10 billion, and to her, it's in the trillions. And, and to me, it's 70 I think it's $70 no, no, billion. But, but no, the, 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 po- the, point, the yeah. point is that people who are in this world are actually not tracking like what the dollar amount is. He th- he thought it's only a ten billion dollar number. It's yeah. not ten billion dollars. And when you said seventy, he's like, no, there's no way. Yeah, he's there's like, no way. It's not ten billion dollars. I mean, because people here, like you were saying, yeah. like we, we, we the, people are just dist- distracted. But then going back to like our, you know, the way Biden's handling it, and the, the, the Zelensky. I think it was January, back in January, yeah, the when the whole thing was about to happen with you know Putin invading. I think uh, Biden even said, you know what? I, we're not going to get involved if it's, if it's a minor incursion. Do you remember when he was basically inviting them? To come in there to start this whole to whole thing, and I don't know. Listen, I know he might. His father knew about nukes or whatever. I worked at a nuclear missile base, and I was hands on in the military with people that were missileers. That was they were brilliant about nukes. And they knew about it. If a nuclear weapon goes off in Ukraine from Russia, I don't care what anybody says. It's the beginning of an end. It's a nuclear weapon. Okay, it's going to change the the people, the land, the atmosphere. The it's over, bro. And if and if if he does something like that, say what you want. We're not in a war with Russia, bro. We're we're giving billions of dollars to one side. That's like if two gangs are fighting and I give you guns, money, troops. Guess what? Say what you want. You're in the fight. It's a war, bro. We're we're involved somewhat in this war. And if one nuke goes off, I'm telling you right now, other people that have them, they're gonna start to get edgy because if he's saying what's gonna happen, we're gonna go and do more sanctions if he does a nuke in Ukraine. What the hell? That's not going to do anything. And, Pat, you should know this as a military guy. If a, if a bomb goes off at that magnitude, even if it's a tactical, everything changes. It's over. It's over. Because then other people are like, oh, shit, they're really doing this? Now we have to get, you know, we have to get kind of involved because we have them too. And, I mean, it's, it's, if that goes off, it's going to be really ugly. I so agree with you. America is totally in that war. 100%. And, like, so when the bridge blows at Kirshon, yeah. everyone says that's the Americans. That's that was Biden. 100%. That's the word on the street, yep. whether it's real, not. This, yep. that, or the other. Yep. Or what we can agree is that everybody thinks a different thing. Yep. And that's true in America about lots of stuff. 100%. Right? Everyone yeah. thinks what they believe is fact. Yep. Exactly. Yeah, I, I mean, agree. I think we're all in agreement. Nobody wants a nuclear war. At all. Okay, it'll, it'll, so... It'll, ugly. It'll be very... Nobody ugly. wants that. But at the same time, he did bring up one major point. Mm. You can't just invade other countries. Now, there's a debate what the relationship is with Ukraine and Russia in the past and yeah. all the situations they have, but... UN doctrine, you don't just invade countries. And you have other countries on Russia's border, i.e. Finland, for example, that just joined NATO that's like, look... They're on our border. Can I say we're one not thing? exactly uh, yeah. in a good situation? One thing here. that is a bit weird is mm-hmm. that when you did his CV and you read it the second time or his bio, he talks about what his dad did. Yeah, and fine. I've never done that. <laughs> my dad used to work on the electricity <laughs> board. Used to do electric cables. Should I should I throw that in my CV? <laughs> what does your dad used to do? My father was an le- le- electrical engineer. Oh, me too. Yeah, same there you thing. Go. That's why we're good people. Yeah, we're good. What did your father yeah. used to do? He gave his father's resume. <laughs> That was hilarious. But, I, I mean, cu- but countries do invade other countries. I mean, we did it in Iraq because we said that they had <laughs> no. We said that they had weapons of mass destruction. We knew that they didn't. We still went. Now nah, we're gonna invade and take over. Then once we found out they didn't have any, we were like, we're gonna change the name to the war to enduring freedom. It's like, mm-hmm. come on, bro. We that invasion stuff is still happening, and I think like we kind of were like, eh, nah, kind of go invade a little bit, but we're not gonna get involved unless it's really serious. And now look what's happening. There's a threat of nuclear war. So, and like we said earlier, nobody cares. Do you think the average person, we walked outside right now, you said, do you know that we're, we, we're getting kind of close and this is going down? They're like, why do I care? Why? You know, Most Kardashian people don't care weight. about U.S. politics. Period. Here yeah. internally. Yeah, you're right. Okay, so now you're asking them to care across the pond, no, across yeah, Eastern care. Europe, yeah. into Russia. Yeah. I'm supposed to know who Voldemort Vilinsky yeah. is. <laughs> I'm supposed to know that he's shorter than Putin. I don't know what's going on yeah, here, exactly. bro. I mean, they should, but they're not. So. Adam, I wonder if you would just have the same feelings if Taiwan tried to take over land in Japan or China, or like a hypothetical, right? Or flip it, Ukraine marches into Russia. Do we stand up and send... Russia eighty billion dollars or fifty billion dollars or three point two trillion dollars <laughs> yes, to stop yes. the Ukrainians. Yeah, well, or, that's also a straw man argument. Ukraine is not, not trying to invade argument. Russia. That's not a straw man. No, argument. but China, okay. your China will take back that, Taiwan. Exactly. Okay, and I well, imagine we'll China that, invading Taiwan. Taiwan is realistic. Ty- 
Taiwan invading China is unrealistic. No, I, Russia I don't, invading Ukraine is realistic. Happening. Ukraine invading it's Russia is unrealistic. I'm, it's, I'm so exactly. that's why I'm saying it's a strong man argument. argument. He's it's not a strong about, man He's argument. asking about of principle. Of so what if, what if India invades China? If India invades China. I'm asking about your principles and if, if it's the same across the board. Yeah, that would obviously be. So we would, and, send, we would send $80 billion to the Chinese to stop an Indian invasion no, that, of China. Well, <laughs> based on your, it's like India it's asking no, if your principles you, hold up. See, this the is board. this is the beautiful thing that you're doing, kind of like Katie does. You have some truth and some conjecture and some falsehoods, and you're like weigh in on it. I'm like, well, there's some stuff you're saying that is agreeable, and some stuff that's not. And you're trying to paint me in a corner as if I'm supposed to. No one's answer to your you bullshit in the question. Nobody puts out. No in the one corner. puts. Nobody you in puts. No one's trying to put you in the corner. Never. Never. We're trying to get you out of the corner. Emotionally. <laughs> Can you pull up what I just sent you? It's important to, oh my to show this. Is, uh, is, is So here's from New York Times. Four ways to understand the $54 billion aid uh, money in U.S. spending in Ukraine. Can yes, you see I the whole thing too. or no? Will it allow you to go up or not? Uh, no, but this is from Got May 20th. So this yeah, is but what, what I'm saying to you is that was five months ago. Right. Since then, we've given another give or take 20, 20. billion. Yeah. Out of the 54 billion we gave, nine billion was to help in economically. Seven billion was uh, food assistance and health care. Six billion was their military and security assistance. Five billion was grants and loans for military supplies. Another one billion was for migration and refugee assistance. Then some for Europe and uh, Central Asia assistance. Then foreign aid. Then twelve and a half billion for weapons and other supplies, and eight billion for military deployments and intelligence. Just in that fifty-four billion, well, and it's been another twenty billion or so since then. And so, an hour ago, Insider just broke: lawmakers could rush through another fifty billion in aid for Ukraine. So we're getting possible, close to that trillion. Before come, no, come possible, we're not, we're not that close to a trillion, guys. But, but, but we're not Ridiculous. close. We're not close to the trillion. But we're over a hundred billion if we give that. You Google three. That's a lot of money. I agree. But but, but just, that's like saying I'm just, worth because I don't have. I'm, it's like saying I'm worth a billion dollars. No, I you're think worth we move a million on. dollars. I feel like yeah. this is not so. boring. I'm bored of billions. But yeah. just to be, just to be clear, be bored of billions. I just want to be clear. Crap. How did you find that article? Google. <laughs> did you Google that? On New York I don't know. Times. But on you New Googled it. Do we, do we have yeah, our friends on or no? Tyler. I'm going to poke my eyes out with a They're pen. They're on? Yeah. We'll have a momentary. And, but we'll yeah, and Katie, I'm pretty sure on. she'd agree with this, and you would too. If we, if we took half, and I don't even want to say the numbers, yeah. the, the number that we just saw, Katie, and we put that to our border our and fix our people American and people. the border, bro, uh, please, like, that's what we want. Like, it's enough of over there, over, overseas, overseas. Help this, bro. So, and, Vinny, should we send any money, it's any, no, a, hear no. me, okay, go ahead, go ahead, Both any, them. to foreign aid, no. any, I, to be honest with you, no, no, we should not, I don't do think any, so, so we should no. have zero foreign I policy, I don't think yes. so, because mind you, mind okay. you, Adam, we I have, have, we have military, we, have, we I, look, I, I don't, we have military installations, I think we occupy a hundred, if I could be wrong, yeah. I think it might be 160, one, something like that, we have bases everywhere, we're plotted mm -hmm. everywhere to protect the world, we're the world's police. When it comes to stuff like that, and we're, nobody nobody really helps us if we get into shit. Truth. I think until this is fixed, and it's not 100% it's not fixable. As a veteran, when I see mm. veterans on the street and they're dying, when I see homeless people, when I see the real problems that we have in Chicago, in the hood, the border, all the stuff, and put, put that money, invest here. Once we're solid, then I would say, okay. Here's some money. Here's some military assistance. But un bro, until we're chilling, I mm -hmm. say no. So do you think we should send, if it was possible, any money to help the people of Iran? I, one, if we're secure, 100%, yes. I say yeah. 100%. Can I, okay, can so, I just yeah. say? So you think we should? I, I, I'm saying when it's a circumstance like that, not people just trying to start a war, 100%. 100%. What, what, but the, the point about NATO and your point about America being the world's policeman, Germany and other countries like mine were not putting as much funding into NATO as a percentage of our GDP as America was. That was Trump's point, yeah. was that America is unfairly spending to protect the world I remember that when our countries are not you know, putting up the dollars. Mm -hmm. So that's all my point was about yeah. kind of the NATO spending I, thing. That's I, why Trump was kind of pissy about it. By the way, that. I think Trump missed a massive marketing opportunity with the NATO thing. Everything with build the wall, lock her up, drain the yeah. swamp. Three words, three words, three Always words. Three. When it came to NATO, how did he not just say, make NATO pay? Oh, make, <laughs> he was just, yeah, it was a three. fucking bullshit, crazy, weird yeah. argument. It was. Made no sense. Yeah. And if all he said was make NATO pay, a lot of people have been like, 
Yeah, okay, I, three words, simplified. I actually understand you. I think he failed like, on that. We like I'm three words. I like that. Yeah. Well, there he, it is. He, got, he got people to think about things that we've never thought about. Come on, before. Tyler. He got, do we have him on or no? Oh, sorry. Yeah, different like conversation. Me and Tyler no, having chats. She's, she's, I love it. Katie's she's like, bent on the 3.2 like, trillion, and I'm scouring. Well, no, because they I've all been have looking tech. For the Look, past they all have tech. Half. I just needed to borrow Tyler's tech for a second. Don't, Did you, you know. Katie, you don't have a phone in the States? You have, you're Where? Oh, come no, on. I'm not, not some that, retard. No, I'm not being that person. Katie, 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 Katie treating this like is me. a phone, no, Katie. No, I don't know if you've, you've, you've ever seen one no, of these. No, 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 Katie, I'm no, Katie, no, Katie, because no, Katie, because you said when you were banned and all that stuff, especially like your, which I'm, I'm, I'm actually. A no, curious. I was being a professional and left it in the green room, but oh. I didn't realize you guys were just oh, no, like okay. having but, shit. But so Katie, you were saying while we're waiting for this person, they canceled your bank account. Yes, when Trump tweeted me the first time, they took my PayPal. When Trump tweeted me the second time and praised my outstanding journalism, yeah. <laughs> uh, they took my personal bank account that I'd had since I was 14 years old. They just shut it down. What, what was the justification for that you don't have to obviously Sounds like Andrew Tate. that just happened to Andrew Tate they shut down when the, when the matrix there's no canceled rational, yeah That's there's insane. no rational you're going to be shocked I'm not an advocate of that whatsoever actually I, know, sim- I know you're not. sympathize with you on that that's ridiculous but they I'm take not. down your bank account no no I, I no, don't think you do advocate for that I don't think you're an asshole thank you actually there's a lot of people <laughs> that would disagree no yeah. you're not you're not you're not you're a funny. sweet soul Okay, so uh, we have our we have our friends here, our guests here from uh, UK. We appreciate you guys for doing this. Uh, if we if we have them on, uh, I don't see them. Uh, I think they're about to join. You may want yeah. to approve them. So Rob Rob tested them. They should be on here in just a second. Okay, sounds good. So you recognize sh- that guy. Though. Yeah, I reckon that's a good looking, good looking, looking is, Assyrian that, that Peter guy. Yeah. Yeah. So, no, but, but think about it. Look at look at look the hair. He could be in the mafia, the and he could be okay. Look at that. Look, look at the eyebrows on him as well. Look at those eyebrows. My eyebrows. I mean, you can braid my. They eyebrows. are on fleek. Yeah. You could braid I mean, my eyebrows. They, they are You're, beautiful. No, they have been looked I, after. I, 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 I'll take. Look it. at his little twinkly eyes. He's a Syrian. Always remember that Syrian Armenian. Don't forget. Okay. So so if we got him on, I want to get right into it because. Uh, Tyler, you said they have them on, or did we go to another topic? Uh, they should be jumping I think on. they threw soup at the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Rob just said we had him. I'm looking into it. She, Tyler's so on it. Tyler's not playing games. Give me 30 seconds. Ever since you said the trillion, tr- tr- his brain just, you threw a monkey wrench <laughs> in Tyler's brain. How about this? If we are going to get these guys, can we tee up the story a little bit yeah, so our audience right, understands? Yeah. What a great, great idea. That would PBD, do you want to tee this up? It's not, uh, uh I'll tell you guys here in a minute why uh, uh, Tyler saying he has it. This is very important on the way this is going to be set up. So, uh, okay, so these ladies, these two girls, Phoebe mm-hmm. Plummer and Anne, Anna Holland, chose to protest in their own way. And they are part of the, the Just Oil activist. And they threw soup all over Van Gogh's iconic sunflower painting. And they glued themselves to the wall. And they're out of UK. And this was a trending topic all over the place. People were talking about it. There we go. We have them on. And I simply want to know what they're protesting. And I want to give them the eyeball to share with us what they were really protesting. So if we have you on, uh, 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 Phoebe, is that you or are you Anna? I'm sorry if I don't know the two names. Hi, this is Anna. Anna, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Very good. First of all, thank you for uh, agreeing to do this and being on. We were trying to do it, I think, last week. Something happened. Uh, sometime we had it like three, four days ago, and then we uh, ended up doing it today. So if you don't mind, take a quick moment. What I just set it up as yourself and your friend Phoebe, you guys are part of the jo- Just Oil activists. You two chose to throw, uh, throw soup all over Van Gogh's iconic sunflower painting, and you glued yourself to the wall. Can you Can you share with us what point you were trying to make? Yeah, absolutely. So in Just Stop Oil, our demands are that the government should end all new fossil fuel licenses. Okay. So they're currently trying to push forward 100 new fossil fuel licenses, which will, without a doubt, kill us. It's a genocidal policy that they're trying to push forward. So in Just Stop Oil, we are trying to prevent that from happening. We're trying to save not just ourselves, but our children and our families. So we decided to throw soup over Van Gogh's painting as a way not just to make a statement about that and to get a people finally talking about this climate crisis, but also to get people talking about the cost of living crisis, which is fueled by the same people who are pushing forward this climate crisis. 
Well, you, you, listen, wh- wh- whether you're getting criticized for your approach or not, you got eyeballs and you got attention. So what you were trying to get accomplished, you got it. And people uh, paid attention to what you're what you're doing. But now you said your concern is that this could kill us. This could get pretty ugly. Can you unpack that a little bit for us on your argument? Yeah, um, you know, so the science is clear. Since the first COP conference 26 years ago, we have created more emissions than the entire of humanity up until that point. Right now, it is a matter of political will in needing to change this rather than the science not being there. You know, this summer in the UK in the heat wave, we lost a third of our wheat crops. We're set to lose half of our potato crops. We're heading towards mass famine. Right now, 33 million people are displaced by floods in Pakistan. 36 million people are facing severe famine in East Africa right now. The climate crisis isn't a problem of the future. We're seeing the catastrophic effects of it right now. Can I ask you what grade are you guys in high school or in college? Um, We're both university students. So I'm 20 and Phoebe's 21. I, listen, please take that as a compliment that you look young. Don't don't take it by anything. It's just you look like you could be high school or college. So it, it, what, at what point did the climate crisis become a concern of yours? Do you remember how old you were when the climate crisis became a concern of yours? And what was the setting when you sat there and said, you know, we better start paying attention to this? Was it early in high school? Was it in junior high school? Or is this a recent thing? Well, I personally began paying a lot more attention to not just the climate crisis, but the, the political climate in the world around me. It's around age 14 um, when I've really started gaining an understanding of all the news headlines uh, that were coming through. And from that point, it just seemed that every single year things got worse and worse and scarier and scarier. So in 2018, I started finally trying to do something about that. So 2018 is when Extinction Rebellion really became popular in the UK. And that's when I started getting involved in marches, in petitions, in writing letters to my uh, member of parliament. But then I realised that none of that made a difference. No matter how many marches I went on or how many petitions I signed, there was no actual change happening. You know, a, a petition could be signed by millions of people. It gets sent to parliament, the House of Commons. They debate it throw it away and are done by their lunch break you know those methods didn't work and it was so frustrating so i joined just up oil because we are a peaceful protest group who use methods of civil disobedience and non-violent direct action to actually make change happen and it really feels that since i started taking action with just stop oil that finally what we're doing is making a difference yeah i think for me i am um... I became aware of it. It sounds a funny thing because I think now we all are quite aware of the climate crisis or to some extent, but I became aware of it probably around five years ago. And at first, I think I only connected with it intellectually. You know, you look at these science and the facts and these predictions and it's easy to connect with it intellectually. It's You can understand it. But I'd ask anyone listening to this right now, to connect with it emotionally because for me that that's when I knew I had to do something about it because as a young person I'm terrified about the future we're facing are you really are you really though are you really terrified are you really uh uh concerned uh for your life are you you know afraid of what's really going to happen and if yes what do you think really will happen like how what? How bad do you think it's going to get? If your concern is truly climate change, that this thing's going to change, how bad do you think things are going to be? Because AOC said we, we may be, you know, ceasing to exist in 12 years. And I'm sure you guys have seen that when she said that a couple of years ago. And, you know, Greta, you know, Thunberg has gone around talking about how she called them, uh, uh, called out a lot of different political leaders around the world for not doing anything. And she went out there and she got noticed by a lot of different people. Are you truly concerned about your future when it comes down to climate change? Yeah, I really am. Last year, Sir David King, who was the uh, former chief scientific advisor in the UK, said what we do in the next three to four years will determine the future of humanity. Because there's these tipping points that scientists warn us of, which when you surpass them, you've done irreversible harm. It doesn't matter the kind of policy changes we make or the sustainable changes we make. Once you surpass those tipping points, irreversible harm has been done. So as a young person... (laughs) 
I'm terrified I'm going to be denied the right to grow old. I'm terrified I'm going to live in constant fear of climate disaster. I'm terrified that I won't have access to clean water or food. And we know that these fears are real because right now millions in the global south are living the realities of these fears. And they're the people that have done the least to cause the climate crisis. So what do you what do you yeah, think? Then- what do you think about and, and I'm listen, I'm not in this space. Neither are you guys. This is something you're protesting. I have my own things. I protest. That's important to me. You know, we all have lived our lives and I have to, we have to respect everyone's concerns, fears and passions that they have in their lives. But what, what do you think about rich uh, people who work for these large insurance companies? Do you think they like losing money? Can you guys hear well, I don't me or no? Any, I don't think anyone likes using money. That's why we have to use disruptive tactics. And, you know, in the UK right now, we are entering an awful cost of living crisis. Right. Yeah, earlier right. this year, the head of British Petroleum, one of the biggest oil companies in the UK, said he has more money than he knows what to do with. He has the audacity to say that. When our country is plunged into this cost of living crisis, yeah. where this winter families are going to be forced to choose between heating and eating, parents are starving themselves so that they can feed their children. And the head of this massive oil company says he has more money than he knows what to do with. Yeah. So, but let me let me give you an idea where I was going with this question on what I what what's the one data that gets uh, this argument to be done with is a lot of these actuaries in the insurance industry, their job is to underwrite the billions of dollars that they're sitting on to protect it. Like their job is to manage risk. That's what they get paid to do. They go to universities, they come out, and they're supposed to study every single thing. And then this insurance company is sitting on, say, $50 billion, $20 billion, and you're coming and saying, I want to get XYZ insurance 30 years from now, 20 years from now. Insurance, cost of insurance is going lower, life insurance, different kinds of insurance that's going lower because people are thinking we're going to live longer. Life expectancy has gone higher in many different countries in the world. And the only reason actuaries are charging life insurance to be so cheap is because they're thinking we're going to live to 100. Like odds are right now, Phoebe, and I'm a little concerned for you guys. You guys are two young, healthy, attractive girls. You're probably going to live to 100. It's all going to be all right for you to be afraid of the fact that the end of the world is coming kind of uh, uh, prevents you some of your best years of your life to enjoy yourself. Now, don't get me wrong. I love the fact that you have a passion. But what do you think about these actuaries and these billion dollar insurance companies that when they do the math, they sit there and say, you're probably going to live to 100 years old. And if that's the case, that means maybe AOC and Greta are wrong. What do you think about these guys that went to school and they do math all day, just a boring life? And they try to protect the billions of dollars of these insurance companies. Okay, so this year, we had the worst droughts in 500 years. That destroyed a third of our wheat crop, half of our potato crop. In the UK, we uh, this summer, we reached 40 degree heat, which is something that was not predicted to happen by scientists until 2050. In those just 48 hours of 40 yeah. degree heat, 1,700 people died of heat exhaustion. The NHS ambulances were put on black alert. Fire brigades had their busiest day since the blitz. You know, we're not worried about our future because we don't have a future to be worried about. This climate crisis is happening right now. We got so lucky that this summer, that heat only lasted 48 hours. Next summer, it's going to last even longer. Next summer, even more people are going to die. But no, let's look sooner than this summer, okay? Let's look at this winter in just a few months. Two thirds of UK families are going to be forced into fuel poverty. You know, children are going to freeze to death in their own homes because our government are too lazy and too incompetent and too downright abusive to care about us. We're not fighting for some distant future. We can't afford to think that far ahead. I don't care about life insurance because I'm not going to live long enough to cash it in. Oh, you know, I, I, I understand I what you're saying. To- yeah. I'm not optimistic. I just want to get to 25. That's my only goal right now. You know, it, it's it's. I understand what you're saying, and I I respect your passion, and it's obvious. It's very sincere, and you're 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 truly concerned about this. Uh, but I will tell you, to me, a lot of time when you when you look at these greedy people, the good thing about greedy people is, 
you know, if their life revolves around money. So let's, you know, the person you guys were talking about earlier that he says, I have so much money, I can't even count. So let's, let's judge those greedy people. The benefit about greedy people is they're, 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 it's a very honest relationship. What matters to them is protecting their money and not risk losing their money, right? They're not willing to risk all the money that they've made. And if insurance companies are still giving insurance policies to people thinking you're going to live another 80 years, that means that future is bright. But, you know, the, the part of protesting for you and for you to do what you do, super necessary. Go make your case. People are going to debate you. They're going to argue with you. I remember when Al Gore 30 years ago said we're supposed to be dead today. You know, in Al Gore's documentary, when he came up and he said, I don't know what it was, 25 years ago or 30 years ago, and a lot of people sat there and said, what happened? Your argument just didn't have any credibility. But it got a lot of young people to go out there and march and protest and get excited about it. So it's a very effective message. People Say that again. People are already dead because of the climate crisis. I'm not right. saying that 10 years down the line, people are going to die. People are dying now, right now, because of the climate crisis. Right. Right. Well, go ahead, Katie. So yesterday, a lady that was involved in a car crash actually linked to one of my circle of friends. She died because an ambulance couldn't get through because your protesters just stop oil were blocking the road and the ambulance couldn't get through in time. She couldn't get the help she needed and she died. Earlier, you said that you are a peaceful protesters. My friend is dead. How do you answer that? We have a um, we have a blue light policy, um, which means whenever we have roadblocks, as soon as we um, hear sirens, we see the blue lights, people move out of the way. Even when people are gluing in the road, there's always one lane that is kept um, clear so that people can move out of the way. And we have never had any complaints from either ambulances, fire brigade or any other emergency services. The, to video, us the video footage exists and the lady can't complain now because she's dead. Let me ask you another question, Phoebe. Uh, let me ask you, what bills do you currently pay? Who pays for your accommodation at university? My student loan. When, have you ever paid any bills in your lifetime? No. So you don't know what it's like to be a homeowner and not to be able to afford your energy bills and then see some stupid young people throwing soup over a painting in a gallery that has nothing to do with the fact they can't afford to pay their bills. You don't know what it's like to pay a bill, Phoebe, do you? No, but I have empathy for those people. You know, this the climate crisis is fueled. But the cost of living crisis is fueled by the cost of oil crisis. They are both one crisis. It's a crisis of greed of our government and their billionaire friends. What do you understand about an ordinary family who can't afford to pay their fuel bills, who needs ordinary fuel to be delivered, but because of green taxation, their bills are now so expensive they can't afford them? And if we stop oil, how much more expensive do you think fuel is going to be, Phoebe? Or is it that you're just spouting out words that you and your friend think look good? How is it related to stopping oil to throw soup over a painting in a gallery? How is that related? How is it helping the poorest people in my country? I understand that right now fossil fuels are subsidised 32 times more than renewables, even though renewables are nine times cheaper. Would you rather your bills were £3,500 or £400? I would rather that you and your friends stopped wreaking havoc in the City of London. I'd rather you stop throwing soup over paintings, stop putting... Uh, orange paint on the windows of Harrods, stop sitting in roads so that my friend couldn't get the treatment that she needed. And I'd rather you went out, worked a bit. Maybe you could do some litter picking on a beach. Maybe you could do something that was practical and helpful. But I don't think being obtrusive and obstructive and lecturing ordinary people when you have no idea what it's like to try and work and make ends meet in the UK. You talk about millions of people. You talk about people who are in poverty. You have no idea what that's like because you live in the rare atmosphere of a university at some woke karate place and you think what you're doing is changing the planet i think what you're doing is pissing people off and i think you could allocate your energies more effectively by going out and picking up picking up litter on a beach thank you can i just um i just want to empathize with you katie but it truly does break my heart to hear about your friend um it really does but i really want you to understand that myself and phoebe are acting out of fear you know, we are terrified 
You shouldn't be, my darling. You shouldn't be. You have been fed a load of nonsense. You're going to live way past 25, and I hope you live till 100 and have a brilliant, brilliant life. Young people should not be in a place where you're being intimidated by fear. You should be living the best life you can. Jump, 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 and your wings will unfurl on the way down. You're limiting your whole world. We should be living a life... Not standing throwing soup in a gallery. Because it's... It has to be done. We're fighting for our lives here. The only way we can make the change happen is if we make systematic change. I completely empathize with you, and I want you to understand that this disruption that we are causing will stop immediately as soon as the government releases a meaningful statement that they will stop producing more fossil fuels. It's as easy as that. that I understand your anger. I really do. I really understand your frustration. I'm angry and frustrated. I really, really am. And... But all this can stop the minute the government... That's not true because we need more fuel. We need more fuel supply. One of the things about supply and demand, as you'll know, is if supply is restricted, demand remains the same, prices go up. It's basic economics. We don't have enough fuel supply. Stopping oil is not going to help with pricing. You talk about renewables. They're not there ready to take over from oil. Well, Well, we currently have eight years' worth of oil in reserve. So if we stop new oil licenses now, we would still have eight years to make a just and fair transition to becoming a completely renewable society. The biggest solar farm in the UK was built in six weeks. You know, we're an island right now. We could be harnessing tidal power. It current, the tidal power current, currently accounts for 10% of our UK's energy production. I, I, I hear your stats. I hear your stats. But do you see that you're going to need to bring the general population with you and people's opinion with you? And I don't believe you're going to bring any people's opinion with you when you're stood throwing soup at artwork. Well, you know, this isn't a popularity contest. The True. suffragettes were famously hated. Martin Luther King was voted the most hated man in America when he was alive. And the thing is that right now we know that these tactics of nonviolent civil resistance do work. I'm sat here today as a queer person and the reason I'm able to vote, the reason I'm able to go to university, the reason I'm able to hopefully will someday will marry the person I love is because of people who have taken part in these acts of nonviolent civil resistance before me well i'm i'm uh not to cut you guys off i'm actually a food waste activist and the fact that you guys do soup mm-hmm. on the painting really bothered me because i'm pretty sure there was hungry people outside that would have loved to have eaten it so because of that i'm gonna go fill up my gas tank i have to. <laughs> i have to i'm just but so listen upset. ladies i it, uh, i gotta tell I you one uh, did you want to say yeah, something, just something one quick question up. for you um i applaud what you guys are doing we are facing goes beyond two tins of um, kudos to you guys for, for at least being very passionate about something. 20 years old, I, you know, if you're both 20, I was not half as passionate about anything as you guys are, so respect on that. But there is a famous quote out there that says, when you're young and if you're not liberal, you have no heart. But if you're, as you get older, if you're not a conservative, you have no brain. So you guys are going to figure that out along the way. We all are. So respect to you. Here are my two questions. Legitimately, what pronouns do you identify with? That's number one. Number two, if there's a hundred of your friends in a room and you talk about your top issues that you care about, what's number one, two, and three, meaning climate, LGBT rights, the economy, health care. So pronouns and your issues, if you would. Uh, so I use they, she, he pronouns, whatever you're in the mood for. Um, and for me, I think the climate crisis and also the cost of living crisis are uniquely unifying because this will affect everyone and your friend i also go by they then pronouns i also don't see how that comes into this argument because the this is what we're facing this climate crisis goes beyond anything to do with gender or sexuality but i completely agree with phoebe the main concern my friends and I talk about is the climate crisis and the cost of living crisis. My university had to open a food bank for its students this week. That's how dire things are. Students who are already getting a loan by the government to pay for things like this can't even afford to buy food using that loan. Yeah. It's all the energy bills because of the climate crisis. Phoebe, Our biggest Anna. concern is eating against meat and just feeding ourselves. Phoebe, Anna, if you had an outcome that you wanted to get with what you did, You got it. You guys were able to get the attentions of others to present your argument. And I I applaud you for your emotional control because you were pushed. 
uh, and folks came at you here, and uh, you were able to give your argument. Now, whether the audience agrees or not, it is what it is. Whether anybody sits there and agrees with you or not, it is what it is. I applaud you guys to be respectful in return, and I value that. So thank you so much for coming on and sharing your views. Uh, we appreciate you guys. Have a wonderful day, guys. The future looks very bright, by the way, just so you know. I believe the future looks <laughs> very bright. Take care, guys. Bye-bye, bye-bye. <laughs> Take care. Thank okay. you for talking yes. to us. Thank you, Phoebe. Thank you, Anna. Take care. By the way, honestly, respect. You know, right. uh, Say what you want, man. I, I don't know if I'm 18 years old. I'm 20 years old. I'm not Speak, responding that way. Not That's speaking not like that. They're well spoken. Yeah. They know what they're talking about. So, they, so, they have a point. But you know what it is, though? This is the one thing I thought about. The, the whole time I'm listening to them, this is what I thought about. I have a 10-year-old, a 9-year-old, a 6-year-old, and a 17-month-old. The power of universities, oh my God. what they do to people oh to get you to be afraid, thinking you're about to die you're in the next die. five years. The, the influence professors have today, the influence teachers have today. What you just saw is two people back to back that we had on, like three people. The, the second one is the byproduct of the first totally. one. Wow. The second totally. one is a byproduct of the first one. The influence the first one has over the second one. And then people come out with degrees. We're sitting there supposed to think. You know, and, and uh, Lamelita, but you don't understand what's going on. You don't understand what's going on with this, and we have to take it. Wow. You have to sit there and listen to it. So, anyway, it's fascinating. I thought, um, I thought it was great. Go ahead. I, I just th think, you know, so one hand, um, I guess to your point slightly, they, they I, I, you know, I, I'm not going to make it to 25 at this rate. Like my aim is 25, she, and she, I'm not mocking. She believes that. Yeah. But my pronouns are they. So, so wait a minute, you had time to work what, what out is, what you're... I didn't understand. Their pronouns is what? They, him. What is, what is they, they, them, and him. Like, I, what is, they're I don't plural. understand. But that's, they're plural. I, nobody gets it. That's the whole point. I don't know. I don't, they're not <laughs> well, like one pronoun, person. Yeah, so she, they want to be... So Phoebe can only be identified as they. If you speak of Phoebe, you say they. They are coming over. They came on the show. They. Yeah, her by herself. They has a sandwich. She's not, oh, so when I said ladies, that's that's not... That, I can't, and then you no, said, hey, yeah, guys, you're thank you for coming on, guys. You messed up three times. And that's why... And then you so That's why I asked that question, Pat. Pat. Now, yeah. because of you, because they're going to go th th throw paint on the Mona Lisa. I, they're going to go to France. That was hate speech. It's, it's that was hate good. speech. I, and also, I, I, the Louvre. The Louvre. Also, at the start, you called them five years old, which I really loved. Girls, are you are you like 10 years old? So you said high school or high school. <laughs> They, they look younger. That was my like favorite food thing. Activist. You like that? Uh, I, bet. I was like, they're, they're throwing soup on, on shit. Dude, from People a, are starving all outside. All I'm thinking from a business standpoint, <laughs> you know, from a business standpoint, they could have gotten $100,000 if, $100, if they would have called Campbell Soup saying, we want sponsorship. <laughs> right. And this is, Be smart. This is Campbell Soup Campbell on soup. the painting and, and then boom. And then Elmer's glue. Five Elmer's seconds, you just got to go like this and then, and yeah. then the glues. And this then then protest, is like, this look, protest is brought to you by Campbell Elmer, Soup. Elmer's glue. And look, I can't take my hand off the goddamn wall. <laughs> So, anyways, oh, as, well, as, as, uh, uh, oh my as, God. yes, I was going to say, Katie, I know we're about to wrap up. I don't want to be too presumptuous, but I'm extending another invite for you to come back anytime Aww. you'd like. That's so sweet. What I love sweetheart. her. Sweetheart. I love her. An hour and 30 minutes ago, I'm going to be in the middle of this. It. He doesn't hour mean and a half it. later. I, you know, Adam, I, maybe, I, maybe, maybe I it was the him. U.S. British thing that I we know. had and it caused fireworks and I when I You're see okay. British people first of all I think I fireworks. let me give you I let know. me give you one perspective why you, you. why you I should love, love her you. you know why he does love let you. me tell you tell me why if she thinks if she thinks 60 billion dollars or 3 trillion dollars she could think a lot of numbers are bigger yeah my yeah. 1 million <laughs> looks like 100 <laughs> billion right now. Yeah. respect for hey. men out I'm there. allegedly hey, a million I'm going to come back I'm going to come back with the numbers on Ukraine please, please. Those, real please. quick please. I want to confirm, please. confirm. Please. Yeah. I'm please coming back with those numbers <laughs> if she comes back in the year oh my you guys are funny right, happy Friday right, everybody guys just so you know the future looks bright some crazy shit is going on it's going to be wild we don't know what's going to happen in Russia Ukraine we feel bad for the folks that are going through, the families that had nothing to do with it, the ones in Iran, the ones in Taiwan. They, they, all these families, they just want peace, but they're in the middle of a government going at it with other people. I'm convinced the future looks bright. As messy as it is, yeah. everything's going to come down to leaders rising up and making things happen. So appreciate you guys for being with us. Uh, Katie, thanks for coming out. This was fantastic. As usual, have a great weekend. Are we on back? Uh, uh, We're back Tuesday with the one and only Chet Hanks. Oh, Tom Hanks' son next week. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. And I'm doing a show at 1 o'clock <laughs> today with <laughs> oh. Preach from Abba and Preach right here in the studio. Oh, cool. Gotta so we got to flip this around. Oh. Okay, oh. we got to go. We Guys, go. have a great weekend. Take care. Bye-bye, bye-bye, bye-bye.